Welcome to another edition of your Wednesday Night Sports Delight, the platform sports talk show. Click those, this you subscribe. All right. He's down on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Representing from the Boondocks. What up, Joe Bo? Hello, what's up? Happy with what up? Happy you repping her. Uh, hey, just a soldier look right now. Everybody give it up for oh, Bunny. What's happening, Bunny? What's going on? Happy holiday. T Bone, what's going on, brother? I'm back. And I don't know about better than ever, but I'm back. <laughs> what is going on, party people? It is your Wednesday night sports delight, the platform sports talk show. I am your boy Smooth. <laughs> I think that may be on a highlight reel tape. <laughs> better and be glad that you are tuning in live along with the millions and millions <laughs> of the platform sports talk show fans on once again your Wednesday night sports delight. Really? Or really? <laughs> Brink's truck backing up in his driveway with ninety-seven go. million. There you go. All you hear is this. Probably somebody who's doing something to give back and, and letting the next generation. Say straight. Have me tear up on here. <laughs> Come on now, don't have me tear up. You know I get emotional. <laughs> People watching around the world, no pressure. And we already have our favorite fan, Miss Williams, saying, "Welcome, Brandon." How, how are you? Hi, Ms. Williams. Uh, a guy who tried to give it his all and put on for the city. To be truthful, because like I said, I'm, I'm St. Louis die hard. The views are smooth. Does not reflect the Platform Sports Talk Show or its sponsors.
what is happening party people it is your boy smooth and welcome to another edition of the platform sports talk show this is your wednesday night sports delight for those watching for the first time thank y'all very much we appreciate it this show as of next month will be going on strong eight years y'all eight years consistently give you nothing but the hits nothing but the hits nothing but the mother loving hits and we're going to celebrate big next month so stuff definitely stay tuned for the eight year anniversary of the platform sports talk show which goes down once again every wednesday night at 7 p.m central standard time once again we're doing the big can't wait for it tonight we have another special show in store before i even go to that last week was amazing we had the first part of the coaches round table shouts out to kyle wagner shouts out to don boyce to coach dominique stringer to raven ward and a special shout out to coaches of the year uh for st mary's high school boys team brian turner and for clayton high school's girls basketball team Brittany willis so as you can see i bring in some incredible coaches incredible people and they make a huge impact and that's what this show is about we want to make a huge impact and get people's stories told where they may not be able to do so on other platforms so this is a very safe space you can be free be vulnerable be authentic and uh, we want to also just give you your flowers while you still are breathing so throughout the night it's gonna be very important we need everyone who's tuned in right now who can see me to leave them comments throughout the whole show if you on facebook if you on uh, youtube if you on twitch if you on uh, on the x you can leave comments and it will be shown on the screen so everyone who's watching can see it our special guest who is ready to talk about his life and what he got going on for the loo he can see it and he can react to it and we just want to shower everyone on this show with love before I continue on, if y'all don't know already, give us that follow on Facebook, the platform Sports Talk Show on the X. Do it right now, y'all, as I speak. Go on each social media site and show us love right now on the X at 314 Sports Talk on IG at Platform Sports Talk. If y'all know someone, that would be an incredible guest. Maybe yourself who needs to have their stories told. Shoot their email right now at platform sports talk show at gmail.com. And also, because we want to get even more people connected with us, we need y'all to go on YouTube. If you, ain't, if you ain't on there right now, go on there, put in the platform sports talk show, subscribe, and click on that bell. So anytime we go live, you will be notified. As soon as the show is over, it will be uploaded on all the social media sites also on roku so add us as a channel the platform sports talk show on your roku device and you'll see tons and tons of incredible shows that we have had a lot of special guests from coaches to players former current uh media personalities you name it we got it and it's amazing stuff comedians you name it i'm, I'm just saying we got it going on and also, if you can't see us right now, you can listen in on that high definition on Hot 365 Radio, where it is always hot. Go on Hot365Radio.com, or if you have iOS, or you got that Android, what up, team Android? You can just put in Hot 365 Radio, and you'll see the logo on the apps. And uh, there you go. You in there. Every first Wednesday of the month. We have an incredible, incredible crew of ladies who know their sports, who know, they, who know they stuff. And I have one lady who's ready to show off a little bit very soon. But you have her, you have Bunny as the host, you have Joe Bo, you have Coach Brittany Willis, uh, you have Annie. It's an amazing panel of women who love sports. And then every last Wednesday of the month, so next week, you have the all male panel, the man cave. Shouts out to the host, Stan, to T Bone Funk, to Sadal the Selector, to Craig Black. Yep, I said Craig Black. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
y'all ain't St. Louis, and also Mario. So once again, the platform sports talk show to keep y'all busy, man. Every Wednesday of y'all lives. And up next, oh, before I bring her on, I'm sorry. Shouts out, man, because it's basketball season. It's March Madness, baby. Right now, it's going on. So shouts out to my alma mater, the V, baby, Bashan Basketball. They won over the past weekend five consecutive state championships. Could have been probably six if it wasn't for COVID. But shouts out to the V, Tony Irons, doing an amazing job with the V. And also, uh, previous guests that we've had on the show multiple times, Cardinal Ritter basketball coach, Ryan Johnson. They, they won four uh, in a row now. Just amazing programs. And shouts out to Corner Ritter. I know we had Brittany Carter on a few weeks ago. The girls is doing amazing. I think they won over 370-something games in a row. Can you imagine 370 something games that you have won, not a loss? And also prayers up to uh their head coach who uh suffered a heart attack after their uh the first game at the final four out in Columbia. Uh prayers up to him and his family as well. Now, let's go ahead and bring in my co-host for tonight. She was like, Fred, you gotta you gotta get coaches on and so I can be part of the show and we can do something very special. He gonna be doing this event coming up. I'm like, sis, I got you. Say no more. Y'all hear her on 96.3. She is who I call the queen of that station. And y'all know her as midday. And she is now on tonight. Paula Lay's night. And she's here on the main show right now. Michelle Lay. What is happening? Hey, what's happening? Smooth. What's going on? Man, life is good. How are you doing? Uh, gearing up for my own basketball sports journey this weekend. So, uh, you know, I live that uh, sports mom's life. And uh, the Lutheran North Middle School boys and girls, we're getting ready to go to nationals this weekend. So we actually leave tomorrow. So we're really excited about that. They won state not too long ago. So, you know, we'll see what we can do up there. There's some uh, some tough teams up there. But, yeah, the boys have been doing good. The girls are doing, doing amazing. And this is their second appearance up there. So. We're looking forward to that. And then just the busyness of life. Life, you know, it'd be lifing. <laughs> hey, I see. And I know last week you was in Jeff City, correct? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we're every uh, <laughs> another weekend, another city, another basketball gym. So it's basketball season. We're pretty heavy right now. Um, he's finishing up with his middle school and then we flip over to AAU travel season. So we're excited and we live for the weekends. We just love to watch the kid do what he does. And uh, it's all about sports. And we just like to see just all the athletes out there. Uh, middle school ball is amazing. So these kids just want to be, do their best, be the best. And, you know, and it's fun to watch them because they're still kids. Right. So. Right. Right. So did you always see yourself as being that, that big time sports mom? Uh, no, I, I really had no idea. Uh, my oldest, honestly, my oldest, uh, it was kind of like, we took him to the Y, you know, you know, get him in something. So we went to the Y, he had his little Y jersey on and, you know, he, he, he was okay at basketball. He's going to hear me talk about this. He'd be like, mom, really? I mean, he got my speed. I'm slow. I don't run fast. So he got that. Unfortunately, my, my youngest got more of his dad's athleticism than, uh, mine. I was a cheerleader. So, you know, I stayed stationary. <laughs> Hey, it is all good, but I want to give a shout out to you just yeah. for being an awesome sports mom, being an awesome Thank mom, and I'm pretty sure as your husband probably uh, contest an awesome wife as well. So, shouts out to you, and I know you juggling many hats from yeah. doing this to being the sports mom to the nine to five to ninety six point three. I mean, life is life, and like you said, but you're doing you're doing it up. Yeah, doing it now, so, and uh, maybe one day I'll retire and uh, get to go hang out on the beach in Florida. I guess that's what they do. They say. So. There we go. Feet up, kick back. Let's go. There we so, go. speaking of letting go, it's time to go ahead and bring in our special guest. So, why don't you go ahead and do the honors? Yes, really excited. So, uh, this person has been making some buzz in St. Louis. He's got an event coming up. Um, he had an event not too long ago uh, where he had a three on three uh, basketball event. So, uh, without further ado, we'll bring in former professional basketball player, current skills development coach, and operations director of Lou Runs, Robert Kennedy. Welcome to the show, Robert. What's happening? What's happening? How are you feeling today? I'm doing well. How are everybody doing today? We are good. No I'm good. Complaints. I'm glad to be on. I ain't gonna lie. I'm excited to be on. And I think uh, I, I love I love to talk, obviously, sometimes. But uh, I love I just love the podcast theme. So I, I'm excited to be on. Thanks for having me. And thanks for having us to Lou Runs as well. No problem. And you're from St. Louis. 
um, actually from Illinois. Illinois, so okay. So the I, area. I did a lot of my dealings coming up as a kid in St. Louis. So I'll give you a backstory. Okay. I'm from Venice, Illinois. So it's about 25 minutes from here, from from North County. So, but about oh well, you was kind of from here because it's you four minutes here. from. It's about <laughs> three to four minutes from from St. Louis. You know, so er, everybody familiar with Venice, Madison, mm -hmm. Newport, Brooklyn. Yep. You know, Granite City. Um, you know, of course, East St. Louis is kind of like maybe 10, 15 minutes from us. It's a nice little drive, but it ain't, it's not far. But yeah, that's where I'm from. I'm from Venice, Illinois. I got it. So tell us a little about, about yourself. Some people don't know who you are. Um, some of us do that follow basketball, obviously. Um, so just who, yeah. are, who, is, who is Robert uh, Kennedy? I'm, I'm Robert Kennedy. Uh, I'm from I'm from the area. So uh, like I said, I'm from Venice, Illinois. Uh, grew up in Venice my whole life. Uh, uh, around junior year, um, our school was deciding to close down within like the next year. So I had to make a decision um, on what high school I wanted to go to. Uh, I had a few options, but uh, I ended up going to our rival school, which is Madison. So I uh, enjoyed my two years there, uh, developed some great relationships with some great people uh, and just kind of finished that. After that, uh, took a scholarship offer to Mineral Area College, uh, played under uh, Coach Gray and also uh, Corey Tate who's a St. Louis native. Uh, he's like a, mm -hmm. Corey's like an uncle to me. Uh, him and my cousin, Erwin Claggett, are really close coming up. So I remember seeing- Corey, Really? Yeah, I remember seeing Corey a lot, just in my up and coming, you know, playing over in Wolves, playing in Tandy's, you know, playing for the Outlaws here and there. Just been a young guy, being around a lot of them. So I finished two years at uh, Mineral. After that, I went to Murray State. Uh, you know, had three years at Murray State I did academically well as far as in juco i had a red shirt year played one year set out one year but i had three years of eligibility so i took my talents on uh, to murray state and uh and it was a uh, it was a really good time for me and um you know after murray uh played overseas for a little minute uh ponte de sword portugal was my first run finished out in china played uh i played iba ball for the iba league it's like a i'm not iba wba league it was in memphis so that was like my first little stint of like getting in a professional realm. And um, and that was about it. Uh, I had a had a quick little run, a, a good little run, so to say. You know, some people don't even get. Absolutely. Some year. people don't get that. Right. Yeah, some people don't even get a year. You know, I was blessed to get at least three and a half, four years under my belt, you know. And um, and it was uh, I had a good time doing it. You know, I had a good time doing it. So. OK, so you mentioned mineral area, which I didn't know. Um, so I actually got my associates from mineral area back. Um, mm. first of all, I'm not giving that year out because I'm not giving my age out, but yeah. I got my associates <laughs> from down there. So I'm from that area. I'm from uh, the middle of nowhere, Missouri, um, and then okay. been in St. Louis for about 20 years. So I'm familiar with that area. So when did you find out your love about basketball? Uh, To be honest, I was I had played. I was in the sixth grade. I wasn't sure what I was going to play. I just knew all my friends was playing sports. And uh, I went and tried out for the team. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. I was playing recess sometime, and I got cut my sixth grade year. So I was kind of like, hey, all my boys playing. I'm not playing. This is kind of weird for me. But I was mad. I remember telling my mom, like, I, I got to make the team next year. And I remember just going outside. Like, we stayed in the project. So I'm from the project. So grew up in the project. So we had a basketball court in the back. And I remember just going out seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, not knowing what my future going to be held. But I knew I was mad and I was like, I got to make this team because all my friends was having fun. And here I go just sitting in the stand. So that's why I developed my love for it. Ah. Just going out myself, being angry as a kid, knowing like this hurt my feelings. I'm going to go out here and dribble and shoot until I get good. And then that's just where it started. Seventh grade year came around. I made the team. We got third place in state. So I was just like, okay, here we go. And um, and I just kept it going from there. I mean, I just was a, a gym rat. I always wanted to be in the gym. I played pickup ball all day long, especially when I started getting good. It was just like, keep it going. Just find a way to keep going. You know, and that's just where it started. I got cut. That's that's like the typical story, but that's my story. I got cut at sixth grade. And I was talking in the school, so why did y'all cut me at that point? Like you could have used me for something. But and I'm glad you brought that up. Now I know it was just sixth grade, but and not trying to compare you to Michael Jordan, but for those who didn't know, you know, even the greatest Michael Jordan, he was cut 
yeah. uh, during his career in high school. Yep. And look where he's at now. So it's good for people to hear that story and hear your yeah. story so they don't be discouraged if they get cut right. on a team just for that period of time. It's all about what you do after the yeah, fact. Sure. You know, right. are, are you gonna you know are, are you gonna respond like you know what this gonna motivate me to be better than where I was, or are you mm -hmm. gonna suck and be like, you know what, this ain't for me? Yeah, All right, that was that hunger right there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So yeah, no, uh, middle school ball. So when you played middle school ball and you you know where you came from, you've seen how the kids were playing at that age when you were doing it, and you see how they're doing it now. Crazy conversation we had today. Yeah. Um, I think middle school kids nowadays they don't play as much basketball as we did back in the day. Really? It's a it's a lost art. I mean, we can pick a warm day in St. Louis and ride around, and you want right. not one court full of 30, 40 kids just outside having fun, having a ball. Like you just don't see it. Like where I stay at now, where we got our house at. There's a court in our cul-de-sac. So some days when it's warm, I like slide by the court to see if it's kid, not a kid in sight. And I know it's a lot of kids that live around here, you know. So it's a lost art, you know. Playing pickup ball is not a thing no more. Everybody, right. everybody wants to train. And you you do that. But we didn't have trainers like that. It was just like a certain amount of people or certain kids that had like that dad or like that coach that really believed in them, they would, they would like put them in the gym, but won't put the other kids in the gym. So, but nowadays it's like coaches are taking all the kids and putting them in the gym and trying to develop them all. But the lost art is coaches don't unlock their gym doors no more. So right. the schools don't even allow the coaches to have open gyms around here. Like, and if they do, they're real selective. They don't, you know, it's just like, man, unlock these doors and let these kids come in and, and just play free willy and work on whatever they need to work on, become who they want to become. But you can't do that nowadays because some of the coaches, you know, they just they just there for the the moment of the season. They ain't there for the off season as much as just being in the gym with them a lot. So it just depends. And it depends on the school, the culture, you know, the coach, of course. So I want to say all the coaches, but some of them you know, do a great job, but it's a lot of kids that just don't get that playing time and that 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 play development, knowing how to just play against other kids and just be free. So that's well, you what know, I back in the day, they, you know, once you get out the house, you come in this house, you're in. You get out, you stay out. So that mentality back in the day when we were growing up was a little different. Mm -hmm. I think now there's a lot of, um, you know, you know, parents are worried about what's going on. You know, we got a different mm -hmm culture different it's a different different time you know plus you know they're they're in their phones they're in their games they're you know unless you pull them away from that you know you got to find somewhere for them to go so um yeah. i see that you know we, i talk about that with my husband a lot we drive around and we see wow there ain't nobody over there at that it's a nice day sometimes my son will want to go somewhere we'll drop him off up there but still we always mm -hmm. are concerned we may stay who you going with what are you doing yeah. um, how far away is it you know honestly when you said 30 40 people or whatever at a, a court I don't think to in this day and age, unless I'm there or he's there, I'm not sending my kid to to do that just because of the day and age. That's it. That's yeah, it no, right there. No, That's no, exactly no. it right there. And and it's and it's based off of like how we was brought up. You know, like yeah. I said, mm -hmm. I'm in the project. So all of my friends were in our same domain as far as right. the realm of space we were in. I think now, of course, we're older. Everybody is parents now. You got a house here. You know, the other kid go to your school, but he don't stay nowhere near you. Probably he probably stay somewhere across town. So, you know, half the kids probably don't even know majority of the kids in that neighborhood because they probably don't even go to school there. They probably go to private here or they go to this public school on this side of town using a different address. It just depends. So, you know, you just don't see it a lot. And I think a lot of kids stay in the house because they don't know the people in their surrounding area. So that's just safe, you know, for parents to, of course, notice that. And of course, no. Yeah, I get it. And as y'all was talking, I'm thinking about my days during high school. Like I said, I went to the V, but I used to always meet up with my boys at Fairground Park and we'd be hooping like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Against old heads, against youngins, whatever. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if you say Fairground Park, uh, yeah. me being 40, uh, 40 almost Not 32 come. years old, it, it ain't happening. 
no, <laughs> it ain't happening because you know it, it's the safety uh, concerns kids out there for other reasons now and not mm-hmm. for the true passion of having fun and being young mm-hmm. and meeting others to you know play games it's all about something else now and it it's pretty unfortunate i hope that some yeah. way somehow that could change in the nearby future but michelle put it right drop dead right there it's let me go out there with, with my baby or i don't mm-hmm. think it's safe out here to have my my son or daughter out there by herself for hours at a time anymore yeah. and, it, and it's unfortunate because it can take away from that development of playing against other people who could be around your age range or older so you can really develop that skill outside of being with trainers at a mm-hmm. you know at a certain gym or whatever yeah, yeah. not for sure and that's some of that time too out in the uh when you're playing against uh you know a group of kids especially older you get an opportunity for you know say you're 10 or 11 you get to play against 14 15 16 year olds and you gotta you gotta learn to get tough so i feel like some of those kids had an advantage where they could get a little tougher instead of okay well i'm gonna take it to the y because i want to be safe well he's gonna play against that other 11 year old or that six-year-old unless somebody sees he's got some talent then you know usually they're gonna pick him up and say you know what why don't we do this let's let's move you over here and yeah. I think that's what's happening these days. So, yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, for sure. I'm a, I'm a sports director at the Y. So I always tell my teams, like, if, if I see a team that's really good for their age level, I just tell the coaches, play them up. Okay. Play them yep. up. Mm-hmm. Don't, yep. don't worry about it, nothing else. Just play them up. Let them get some bump because they can't, the other kids just can't keep up with them. So I, I get it, you know. So that's what we kind of created the Lou Runs for, too, you know, to offer a space for, you know, the upper echelon athletes, you know, to come into a space to where the parents feel safe, the players feel safe. And like you said, like you don't want 30, 40 people that you just have no idea of who's there for what reason. Mm-hmm. At least at our runs, everybody that walking our in the gym where we having something going on, supposed to be there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, supposed to be on the court. You know what I'm saying? Got a name in a organization or whatever school so we we hand pick a lot of stuff because we understand that as well like we just can't allow these kids to just play with anybody you know right this ain't, this ain't like ymca you can just walk in scan in and just go in the gym and just play against anybody so no we don't do that but i get it so tell us about you mentioned the loo runs that's why you started the loo run so tell us about the loo runs uh as i was talking earlier uh we started doing COVID. uh it was doing COVID, man we were in the house I mean, you got to think we we trying to figure out how we going to even go outside and have a good time. You know, we on the phone all day and it's getting old and and we just and then I get a call like, hey, we doing an outside run. And I'm like, fill me in. What's going on? They like, well, the little we call it the little runs. We're going to be doing our first run on the south side. We want you to pull up. And then we just kind of went from there. So we started on the outside first. And after that, it, it gained so much traction, like, as far as just, like, people like, damn, what's this? What's going on? Hey, man, when the next one? When the next one? I'm getting DMs and everybody else calling, trying to figure out, man, where the next one. And we just picked a park. We just were strategic on what park we're going to pick. Okay, we're going to pick this park, but we're going to post it earlier that day. Like, we at this park at 6 o'clock tonight. And then that way, it get people a, a, a lot of time to reshare, repost it bring a five and we just start going from there you know and then uh we did a run in my neighborhood out in madison we did like a ball is life run lou runs and and we just kept going outside and outside i mean i'm gonna say outside a lot but we was outside during COVID, you yeah know, and just trying to stay safe and um and that's how it all started man it, that's how it really all started just outside run and then ideas start transpiring and we start going back and forth with how can we make this better What's the next? What's the next step? What's the next step? And this is where we at today. Like moving forward, we here three years, what three, four years after COVID, I believe. So mm. we here. Well, that's a beautiful thing because COVID it shut down a lot of things for us. So it did. It um, did. But a way to bounce back, especially during COVID, because that's a it's a sport where you have to be around people. So finding a way to mm-hmm. do it in the middle yeah. of a, a pandemic, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I I want to say one thing. I gotta shout out Terry, a three D. You know, I think uh, he played a very, very instrument piece into the Lou runs, you know, by allowing us to use his facility at 3D. And I think um, if it wasn't for Terry, I don't know what, what we would be at at this point, but we were able to use his private facility, of course, 
during mm-hmm. COVID to have our first women's run. And that went viral. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we had all the top dogs, Suge Sutton. Uh, we had Tasia Walker. We had uh, we had uh, the Suge. We had the other Suge. We had Shanika Butler, Jaleesa. I mean, you name some of the greats. Brittany came out. Some of the surge girls just came in and showed love. So like, it was just it was just real big, you know, for us to have a, a women's run there. And uh, even to this day, I was explaining it earlier. Uh, it's still people commenting on it right now. Is that like two, three million views? You know, it's still like people still enjoy watching it. You know, and so I said, shout out to Three D for sure. It'll always be our Lou runs home. Absolutely. Hey, shout out to Terry. Um, he was my son's coach for a little while. So I have all love for Terry over at 3D. We've had an amazing, he's got an amazing 2028 team over there too. So um, yeah, yeah, he's doing big things right now. So yeah, shout out to Terry, 3D Nation. Uh, definitely. Uh, that's my fam right there. So um, mm-hmm. got some yeah. love right there. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're also affiliated with uh, Ball, is White. Ball is Life, right? Yeah, Ball is Life. Yes, yeah. yes, Ball is Life. So uh, uh, my, uh, I won't call him my business part of me more like my brother. You know, I think we developed a great relationship. Oh, okay. I thought something went out. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. now we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, we uh it's like my brother, man. Tom, really good dude, man. He does a lot of good stuff in the city. Um, he has done a lot of great things for a lot of people in the city too, and worldwide, you know, so his connects. His network, my network, you know, and uh, we just work, we just gel together, you know, and uh, we just form this brotherhood with us, man, and um, and that's how it all started, you know, through him and bringing me on and and uh, teaching me the ropes on a lot of stuff and teaching him some stuff on a lot of things on how to operate around here, and and we just kind of just been growing, man, growing together and just figuring this thing out, you know, day by day, uh, challenging ourselves, bringing up new ideas, trying to be innovative, creative. You know, and how we approach everything. So, yeah, that's that's how it all started. So, uh, I, I'm thinking about it now. Was it your event in which, um, like, the whole Lou came out to this park, and like it was this cat that was on social media, and he travels to like different cities and states, whatever, and he like well known, and he'll be like he'll ball out against some of the best competition. Yeah, was like that, you had was that like, your uh, event. Yeah, so we had like a kill car. He had came to St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, for a while. okay. Uh, another guy called the Hezzy guy. He, yeah, uh, he came to. Uh, I believe Hezzy came here, and then um, they went to Decatur. It was a it was a tough run in Decatur, man. I I was there for it. So Hezzy showed up there. He did his thing. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Gonzalez twins, Dylan Gonzalez. Uh, one of they okay. both went to UNLV. So she came to the women's run that was here. And uh, and uh, you know, it just kind of, you know, just kind of showed the city some love, and and just, you know, that's yeah, that's about it. Like a few uh, definitely influence uh, influencers, so to say, you know, showed up and came out to a few runs. That's awesome because that puts me in the mindset. Now I am showing my age when I bring this up, but for those watching, y'all may be late and comment with me. But it reminds me of those good old days when you watch and one. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and, yeah, for sure. And, yeah, and they go to each city. They they have a tryout, so you, they can recruit you to play for the game that night. And mm-hmm. if you even that, that if you if you are above beyond, you might even be on a team throughout the whole tour. So yeah. that kind of put me in the mindset of those good old days of going out to the court, no violence. You know, what I'm yep. saying it was just everyone come together. Man, it'd be all love. Man. Yeah, it'd be all yeah. love. So we we, we couldn't be more appreciative of uh, the support. You know that we are getting the people behind us that support it. Um, it's just one of those things where it's it just feel right, you know. Especially when you got the right people with the right mindset and the right heart in place to do things like this, you know. Uh, some of this stuff, you know, of course it can be money driven, but we know we'll get to that point. But right now, we want to really put out a good product, you know. And we want people to have a great experience. We don't just want you to just walk away. And you just feel like, why did I just sign up for that? I could have saved my time. I could have saved my money. I could have right. saved my energy. You know what I'm saying? Why Why would I sign up for it again? You know what I'm saying? So we want to make sure that when we put it out, we want people to be itching and waiting on the next one. You know what I'm saying? We want the younger kids to be like, 
I want to play in this when I get to the seventh or eighth grade. Or uh, I want to be invited to this run because they're gonna have a they're gonna have the best of the best, you know, there. I want to show them what I can do, you know, and I think it's just a good platform for us right now. And that's huge because, uh, you know, traveling around, uh, my, you know, my sons, we, we do a lot of traveling. Sometimes we'll go to events like, dang, I just wasted all my money for this. It's, you know, this tournament isn't this or this event isn't that. And to have a good quality event, it's important. And it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it helps set the tone and it helps bring people back. They're going to want to yeah. come back and it helps you be able to create a next the next event that's going to give even more. So, yeah. yes, that's a huge. So let, me, let me ask you this as a parent. When you go to these tournaments. What do you feel like is lacking or what you feel like, man, this tournament should have done this better or they should have had this for the kids? Like what what do you see and what do you feel about how you feel about that? I, I think some of the tournaments that we've been to, the ones that I'm like, man, what are we doing um, that are high profile tournaments and then they don't prep or they don't understand the capacity of the gyms like we're coming and there's no room. Um, we're having a hard time getting in. Their lines backed up like you didn't equate to have people at the gate. Um, just things, referees. I think it's important to have really good quality referees when you have good quality events. Those are the type of things. Um, just not overcharging at the door for just lackluster. Ugh. You know, uh, I think sometimes, too, when we're paying for an event, but then they're looking for parents to come to work the tables. I think that I've seen those complaints. Um, you know, well, why are we paying to get in if you want me to work the table? Do I get in? Do I get for, do I get to do the table for free? Things of that nature. Those are tournaments, though. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think some of the, uh, you know, the exposure camps or some of the events that we've been to, we have really haven't had a lot of issues. But those are some of the complaints that I've seen as far as tournament wise, even some of the major tournaments um, when we've traveled out with, say, like, uh, I think we went to the main hoops tournament, some of the major um uh, coast to coast prep tournaments. Some of those, um, we go down to down by the river term. Some of those, these are like the, uh, I would say like middle school, the younger kids, um, mm -hmm. when, especially because kids are traveling, parents are traveling and they go to these events because their kids want to go. So we're obviously spending a lot of money. We're spending money to travel. We're staying in their cities to come to gyms and just these lackluster gyms. We can't get in. I went to a gym once I had no AC. Um, mm. so, you're going to charge me $25 a day, no weekend pass. You want me to work the board? And then you got me in no AC. So those are the type of things. Or the referees have no clue what's going on. They don't know the rules. We go to one gym. The rules over here are different than the other rules. It's just those type of things. When you have good quality events, all that stuff is laid out. Um, you, every every uh, referee in each gym knows what's going on. Um, it, it, we, we expect quality, okay? If we're going to go to a quality event and we're going to pay for it because we spend our money to take our kids to have fun and to play in these nice events to play up against some serious talent. We mm -hmm. want them to put the effort to make sure we have a good experience. So those are just some of the things that I, I could say um, that we've experienced in some of our travel. So, Gotcha. Uh, Rob, with that being said, do you feel more local colleges like SLU, like uh, Lindenwood, like UMSO, should hold more events like that so they can come out and do their thing so people like Michelle don't have to be in jams where you can't even find a seat to sit in yeah i think they should i think uh you know if they were smart um as far as marketing wise as far as right. uh, you know what they have to offer from their schools and they don't have to just be about basketball just the whole piece of the the academic piece of what your school has to offer for these kids, you know, right. programs that you have at your colleges that these kids can sign up through their high schools. So, uh, you know, you catch them at the middle school spectrum, you get a chance to follow them for a few years, you know, and, uh, but yeah, I think, um, colleges local should, should definitely figure out a way to open up their doors, open up their gyms. And if they, you know, tap in with us and you know we 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 can coordinate some things and get some things going but uh you know they just gotta they gotta fall in love with falling in love with the city mm -hmm. you know knowing and knowing you know they have a lot of talent right here in their backyard you know but that comes with hiring coaches outside of st louis that don't even tap in with none of the grassroots coaches here locally you know uh some of these coaches come from manhattan and new york and they from california and they come in here they don't have not one person from the city on their bench. I ain't saying it got to be somebody huge in the city, but it needs to be somebody that can connect with all of the grassroots coaches, you know, in their town 
to to help you with talent you know but who knows how that process goes man i know it's a business but i think they just need to do a little bit better on how they want to market their brands you know and, and advertise their school to the kids absolutely well you just did a three-on-three three, um i think it was a middle school uh three yes. on three event that was really nice uh, i think it was yeah. a one day one, one or two day event mm -hmm. yes okay. it was a one day event one day event. Okay. yeah um my son actually played in it. I, he, I was not able to make that event. I was working, unfortunately. I really wanted to. I hardly ever try. I hardly ever miss anything he yeah. does. I love all of that. And I heard it was an amazing event. He said he had a blast. Um, yeah. uh, so how did how did that come about? Because I know you've done three on three events for older, uh, like older adults, yeah. women and, and men. Um, what made you put the three on three for the middle schoolers together? Oh, uh, like I said, we did the we did the men's tournament. We had a five k cash prize men's tournament. Then we turned around and did a five k cash women's tournament. Shout out to all our sponsors, all our donors. Like we, it wouldn't have been possible without them. Uh, shout out to Emerson YMCA for allowing us to uh, host it. Uh, so fast forward to after we did the women's. You know, my brain always sparring. I'm always like, what's next? We just got done, bro. What's what we doing next? And I'm like, middle school, middle school, middle school, middle school, you know. So uh, we did that. And uh, man, and it was just like one of those things where we just kind of partnered with. Uh, so I don't know if everybody's familiar with the St. Louis City League. Um, so SC, uh, they end up kind of creating a partnership with us to do a three on three. They was going to have a lot of kids in the city. To sit like the Kips and the PHL schools to sign up, and then um, we end up opening up to the public. So we end up getting you know the 3D and a few few other kids from a few other organizations like Big Game, a lot of kids that played different for different AAU teams and stuff like that. So uh, and that's how it all started. You know, shout out to St. Mary for allowing us to uh, you know use their facility too, and um, and it was a good event. You know, I didn't expect a lot of people to come out like they did, but you know, a lot of people did, you know, and um, and we just and that's how it transpired. It was just a a, a quick conversation, a partnership with with a, with City League, and and that's how it, that's how it transpired. So uh, and it, and it turned out very well. Yeah, you had some heat in that event. Uh, shout out some of the kids from Three D Nation did one. Shout out to Tiffany. Yeah, Three D um, definitely definitely came and showed out. They had two teams in it, man. So I hit Terry up like, look, we need some, we need like a couple more teams, man. Can you, and, you know, he was like, say no more. So. I think, uh, like I said, shout out to 3D man, and um, was allowing us to do that. So, uh, so yeah, so we we, it was really good. I ain't gonna lie, man. I love the event. You know, the girls are waiting for us to do one for the girls. Yeah, I was. I'm gonna ask you about that in a minute, but yeah, because mm -hmm. I know that there's some talented young ladies out here. Yeah, um, hey, but listen, they on my bumper. They all <laughs> just don't forget about us. I'm like, right. hold on, everybody. Like, I got y'all. You know, I got y'all. We're going to do it real big for the girls, man, because the girls is the theme has to be right. You know, we're trying to yeah. still think about the right theme, the right color, like every every I don't give y'all too much of it. But we just trying to really, really, you know, make sure it's done the right way and not just any way. You know, did you realize when you started that these events, especially like um, the three on three, you said you didn't expect that type of turnout. Did you? Did you imagine that St. Louis and the surrounding areas has this much talent in the middle school? Because um, there's a uh, lot of. Kids. I was always kind of tapped in a little bit because I got a few, a lot of connections with the grassroots coaches. You know, I talked to who I okay. need to talk to to get the right, you know, and then uh, didn't know that even on the surrounding areas of outside of St. Louis, man, it's a lot of talent, you know. So we're trying to just really shed light on these kids right now because we know how important it is when they get to high school you know if they have some colleges knocking on the door you know we want to be able to create a platform to where coaches can just kind of get a glimpse of what's going on you know especially with this event here you know uh we're just trying to really shed some light and um we're gonna do more we're gonna do more events uh because i know a lot of kids you know didn't make it you know and it's just it's not it's not no vendetta and it's not personal you know we just had a small committee of of people you know doing this stuff and uh and we just you know we felt like we picked the you know the best that we could pick and um you know and hopefully you know those that didn't get picked can be ready for the next event you know to showcase their talent as well so you know just stay tuned in and you know stay working and you know we're just gonna just just keep building all right. So speaking of that, that is the Lunex, right? So uh, Lunex is yeah. um, it's coming up next week. 
Uh, yes. it, you've dropped all the teams. Um, you've just announced the coaches. So you've got some serious, serious things happening with this. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Um, you kind of t tapped in on the selection process, but explain that because, as you know, St. Louis does have a lot of basketball teams. There's, you know, yeah. some kids that didn't make it, some kids that did. And we, we just kind of want to understand that so they know maybe next time or how, you know, what, what needs to take place. Well, I think, um, you know, the selection process was just, um, like I said, we, we kept it real private. You know, we got on the phone with, you know, other coaches. You know, I don't want to really get into to too many details because even for us doing this, we're still figuring out how to really, really roll it out and develop the right criteria. Like, this is our first annual. So, right. I think, uh, you know, we're going we gonna to run into some bumps and, and, and some roadblocks as we're growing. And, um, you know, and for year two, we definitely creating a, a stronger criteria, you know, and and, and kind of kind of going that route to where, you know, it can kind of be like more of a like a Google form criteria where you can go fill it out and things like that. So we're just trying to figure out the best way. But like I said, this first one, man, was really was really intimate. It was really private. Um, we had a small committee of people on the seventh grade side and on the eighth grade side. Uh, you know, we went through countless of highlights and little game films and you know we how tall is this kid based on how tall is this kid what does this kid do better than him or are they the same kind of player like all of this stuff kind of yeah. just kind of plays a major part you know on how and who we picked you know and i think uh it was kind of just up in the air for a long time man i think we had like on the seventh grade side i maybe had a list of like 42 kids on the A grade side, it was like 60 some kids. And I only was doing 20 kids for the seventh grade rising star and the A grade was 24. So I guess y'all can just imagine the headache, the phone calls, the the evaluation of this and that to even pick the kids, you know? So, and of course you're gonna miss, you know? And sometimes it'd be like that, you know, McDonald's all American. I'm sure they have a bump load of kids that don't get a chance to make their game. You know what I'm saying? You got Jordan Brand Classic. I'm sure his kids averaging 30 in the country that don't even, that probably not even got nominated. So, you know, it's just a lot of stuff that I just don't want to, you know, get too far in detail. But yeah, it's just like, uh, you know, just picking them as the best we can and we're going to get better at it. You know, that's all it takes. We just got to get better, bump our head a little bit, but we're looking to have a great event for sure. Okay. And awesome. um, it's not just St. Louis kids. You was all around Missouri in that criteria. On mm -hmm. this yeah, yeah. We had kind of hit, kind of hit a little, some small towns on the, you know, on the outskirts. Some kids in Southern Illinois, the Boot Hill, you know, uh, Springfield. You know, we just trying to, you know, shed, like I said, shed light on some some of the top talent in the surrounding areas. You know, so, but yeah. Okay. So this event is next. When, next uh, Thursday. Thursday. Sorry, Thursday. I definitely didn't know what it is. It's next Thursday, and mm -hmm. coaches, you just um, you just dropped a uh, yeah seventh grade coaches. Um, so the seven grade coaches, um, uh, Earl Dockett and um, Earl Dockett was just in the championship game for the city league. They ended up losing, but uh, he's he's a really good coach down in the city. So uh, just wanted to kind of shed light on the city coaches, you know, and then um. Uh, on the other side of the bracket, we got a uh, Rashad Chapman and uh, Lamont Brown. Uh, really, really, my my mentees. You know, been kind of helping them out throughout the way. Uh, just kind of watch them guys grow up, and you know, decided to pick two guys from North County. You know, to kind of represent the North County. You know, Hazelwood, the Hazelwood area. You know, and um, just kind of bridge them all in like that. And then, of course, on the All American side, the big the big game. You know, we got a uh, Justin Tatum. Of course, everybody know who Taddy is, uh, Jason's dad, so to say. Uh, we got Corey Frazier, you know, have done a – both guys have done a, tre a tremendous amount of work here in St. Louis. I actually – Justin was my mentor. Uh, I actually – that was my first year coaching was with Justin, and I kind of followed him for about three, four years, and then I jumped on Frazier staff for about six or seven summers. So it was just like uh, I had two good guys that took me under their wing and just kind of showed me a lot of love, showed me the ropes, you know, allowed me to use their platform for myself to get my name out there as well. Started me off training. And um, we got a uh, coach, Pat, coach. Uh, we got coach Pat. 
we have Polk, uh, we have uh, Johnny Parker, and we have Nathaniel uh, Griffin, uh, head coach of the uh, Griffins. So we got some heavy hitters on the on the ballot, you know, for the A grade, you know, and I think uh, it's gonna be a show. I think uh, everybody know Tat and everybody know Phrase, man. They coach with a lot of emotion, and I think uh, they're gonna bring out the best in these kids and. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just like a one night only, you know, it's a right. one time thing. You you'll never see you'll probably never see Tat and Frazier coach against each other again. So mm. uh, an event where you want to come see the great ones and get on their flowers, you know, the legends that, that we that we love in our city, you know, give a chance to give back to our kids. You know, and I think that's so important. You know, it's very so. Important. Real quick, got a question from It's a Mind Game on Instagram uh, asking, do you guys introduce them to mental training? Um, we we are we are working on trying to do something like that. Uh, like when we when we had them for practice, we're going to have like a speaker or somebody come in either during the practice or like before they go out for the game. So we're working on trying to get get with some people to talk about that because that's a big piece my wife's a mental uh therapist so uh she has an online clinic uh power of confidence so it's like uh we in our household we're real we're real big on mental health and we know how important it is uh and then as a coach man you know some of these kids really do be having you know some issues but i think mental health will hope hopefully allow them to still do what they want to do but just kind of get them in the right space of mind too and on how to deal with a lot of these feelings and a lot of these challenges that they're dealing with too so that's a great question but we're definitely trying to work and incorporate mental health into our spectrum of things that we got going on and we also got showtime 1930 this is from instagram as well very excited for the opportunity to go in this game also being able to meet the great coaches of the eighth grade all-star game yeah that's one uh i think that's docket it's one of our coaches uh so shout out to earl man um he does a hell of a job with those kids down there man and uh you know guys like him you know didn't know who he was i just knew he was doing some great work you know so it guys like him deserve a shot an opportunity to kind of put himself out there on the platform as well to kind of show the city you know who he is as a coach and what he can bring to the culture you know so we just trying to you know just always just try to you know, give people a good platform to to do that on. So, so this uh, isn't just about the the kids. You're also giving some exposure to some of the coaches that norm, don't normally yes. get to be in these type of platform situations. So yes, 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 nice. yes, yes, and and for the kids too, because you know some of the kids don't don't have the the backings, but they have the talent. You know, and um, you know, especially for the rise and short showcase. You know, it's it's so important to you know kind of put the seventh graders right there on the platform just to kind of give them a glimpse of like what it is, you know what I'm saying? And how hard they got to work to get there. Cause it ain't, you know, cause it ain't all peaches and cream along a lot of times with this game. So you just got to stay in the lab and just keep working. Well, it's definitely not the same as when my oldest played seventh grade or played in middle school than it is now. I think the game and the way these kids are playing, training and working to just be great has evolved. And it's amazing to watch sometimes because they're so committed at a young age to mm -hmm. You know, that's what I want to do. OK, I want to be I want to be the best or I want to be better than yesterday. And, you know, you see some kids, they instead of playing a video game, they're leaving a game they've lost. And they're hey, mom and dad, take me to a gym, take me somewhere so I can shoot. I, I need to do something, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's great to see the passion of these kids. And it's great to see that there's a, a platform for it. Obviously, all the kids um, that wanted to possibly be in this event or um, you are excited about this event aren't actually get to going to play in it is there any opportunities um next week at the event for them to do anything what what can we expect at the event i guess is what i'm asking uh give you a few details i kind of want to keep a lot of it you okay. know but but you know i, I gotta ask say, you know that's I, me I, I, no, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this i'll tell you this we want this event to for the parents to have a great experience great you okay know what I'm saying? like we're going to have you know everybody come come with a little empty stomach you know we're going to have you know food for the parents you know, uh, you know, they get a chance to kind of mingle in a different space. You know, we gonna have like the upstairs is going to be kind of just like kind of VIP only, you know, and just we just want to be able to show the parents like we put a lot of thought into this, not only to, you know, showcase your kid, of course, and put them on the platform, but, you know, put you in a space to where you feel like, you know, what you've done 
this far is finally, you know, showing and, you know, you kind of can come to a space where you're like, man, I can get some food while I'm here and it don't cost me. I had to, I can come to this game and it don't cost me anything. Like that's the experience we want, you know, and then um, you just kind of sit back, eat some good food, watch some good basketball and just have a good on and just have a good time, you know? So that's what, uh, that's what I would like the parents to see, you know? And um, like I said, we got a, we got some videos about the drop soon. So uh, some influencers. So it's going to be some cool stuff going on. A lot of the kids will know what's going on, but, uh, but as far as the parents, man, we just want y'all to just come in and just, just get a get a good feel of the environment. So you dropped your coaches, and we, you know, I was like, oh wow, look at the coaches. Okay, okay. Any other special guests, or should we expect any other special guests? Uh, you never know. You never know. Mm. You never know. Uh, we uh, we talked to, we talk to a, a few inf influential guys here in the city to see if they're going to pull up. So uh, we're still waiting on some confirmations. You know, sometimes, sometimes they'll get to us the day before or the day out, you know, yeah, a couple yeah. days. So we're a week out, you know, and uh, I think uh, we're, we're working hard to to bring some of those heavy hitters out, you know, to come in and, you know, just kind of be a presence, you know, just 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 be here. Just be, just come, come check out the crowd, come say what's up to the kids or whatever, you know. We have our guy Draco who uh, does a lot of salute games. He's going to be the MC. So, oh, that's uh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so we all, so we'll just uh just kind of have him kind of take over the crowd and you know kind of do his thing and you know just kind of bring some cool that uh I just think uh the city haven't seen you know like I said it's like a with Tad and Fraser involved man it's like a it's like a one night only show you know and you're only gonna get it next Thursday so if you got some time I just need everybody to pop on out pull on out. All right. And tell us about the event again. It's next Thursday at St. Mary's. It kicks off at six o'clock is the uh, Rising Star Showcase uh, game for the seventh grade. And then, um, you know, the main event will be uh, eight o'clock. I mean, the main event will be seven thirty, a great all American game. Uh, and that's on at St. Mary's on the south side, four seven oh one South Grand Boulevard. OK. And do you have anything in the works for the next event or are you waiting to this one to marinate? Uh, we're. We got a three on three coming up. We got a 10K cash prize for the men's. So we're coming back with that. That's going to kind of be our annual thing. And then, um, you know, I do got something special. We do got something special again for the middle school kids. I can't air it out right now because we ain't finalized the details. But just know we got something else cooking, you know, for for the middle school kids. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm working with the girls. Uh, we got another event we we trying to cook so we got some stuff coming on i guess for me i hate blasting a lot of stuff because you know people get ideas and they try to you know so i try to be real real we try to be real discreet real private on like who we what we doing but like i said this is a good platform and when we do it we want to come back and we want to tell y'all and tell the world like what it is and what's next but our next two three events they're going to be really, really dope. Okay. I, I can guarantee that. And uh, and yes, they're going to be dope. And then it's going to, we're going to keep the middle school kids involved. And uh, and uh, you never know. We might jump into soccer. We might jump in. Uh, okay. You just, you, you know, we the Lou run. So it ain't all about basketball for us. So, mm -hmm. you know, the hard part is trying to figure out what we doing. Yeah. So. We ain't just basketball guys, you know, we tied in with some soccer kids, soccer players, you know, we're, we're kind of, we can kind of do this thing e either way. You know, we might do a volleyball tournament, like who knows what we're going to do, but we the Lou runs, you know what I'm saying? And I'll say it on your platform right now, like, and we, we going to run the loop and that's okay. what it is. Right. And, uh, the girls, now I know the girls are waiting, so. The girls wait. Oh, we're going to do it so. Man, we're gonna do it so special for the for the women. It's gonna be crazy. Like from the colors. I mean, you just you just gotta man, y'all just gotta tap in, just stay tapped in, stay watching us. Um, and we're gonna do something because I'm I'm a girl's coach, you know, and I'm a girl dad. So I I gotta do it big for the women, you know, because it's very, very and then for us, it's so important, you know. I think the women's game has grown tremendously throughout the years, and uh, you know, and uh it's just not a lot of light being shed on the game, you know, uh, especially for women's man. And all these girls deserve it. Um, they're playing basketball more. A lot of girls are falling in love with the sport more. 
And uh, we want to continue to put them on a platform to where they could feel like, man, I love this. I love how they presented me uh, from the from the game, from the graphics, from the film, like everything, you know. So we going we definitely got some. We definitely got some next. So where? So you mentioned a couple things coming up. Where should um, they follow you at? And then I got a question. Another question for you. Uh, follow us on the IG right now at the Lou Runs. So that's where that's where you can get all our information at. Uh, whenever we drop anything, we always make a post or a story. And, um, and then, of course, my personal page is underscore I am Kennedy. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, where we at right now. I think I saw a question said uh, yeah. on our staff. Yeah. Uh, we have about two women uh, that that's just kind of like tied in with us. I want to say they officially on the staff, but like they do a lot of good stuff for us, too. You know, so we got a lot of people that that come help us out, volunteers and stuff like that. Um, but like as far as like anybody that's like running any type of operations or anything like that, like, nah, but we do. Uh, we do got a few uh, people that that rock with us, you know, and that, and that comes and comes and help us out when we need their help. Uh, and they do a good job at it. So we appreciate them for sure. OK, because I know there's some women out here that know a lot about these sports. You know, you can't count them out these days. Yeah. Like you're not just there watching. Yeah. But there's some women out there that really now, know when we do the women's when we do the when I when I do anything with the girls. I always tap in with a with a girl that that got some influence. Like it ain't just I can't sit here and say like it's just me pulling all the strings. I just kind of line everything up and use my connects and my resources and my network to get get the job done. At, you know, it's just like any business, you know. So but yeah, with the women's, we're going to tap in with a lot of the the greats. You know, we're going to tap in, tap in with the ones that, that we know can help us get the job done. And then we go from there. I think Coach Buchanan is over here trying to uh right tap in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, athletic director, basketball, volleyball coach. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we gotta tap in for sure. Hey, uh, speaking of that, speaking of that, Tiffany Buchanan, tap in to us so we can get you on as a guest on our on our sports talk show as well. So tap in. Yeah, so we're definitely looking forward to it. Um, I've been hearing a lot of buzz. Um, obviously, uh Everybody wants to be a part. So I'm hoping that everybody comes out because I love to see when um, we have these type of events, it brings mm -hmm. people together. I love the networking from a parent aspect and then just watching all the other kids because it's just exciting watching them see do their craft. So I look forward to all the events that you have. Honestly, I just couldn't make the three on three. So I'm excited to make this yeah. one. So. Okay. Yeah, we got another three on three coming up too. So the kids need to be be ready for that one too. So we, we rolling, we cooking. Okay. That's do you have like a... A mom three on three of not best that don't have <laughs> basketball skills. Like I might be able to do something like that, but you know, don't put no professional basketball players up against me because that, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, you watch yeah. them all do a little something something out there. Hey, you never know with us, man. We might uh we might just do a parent three on three, you know, and hey. just kind of fun. We might do a dad three on three and just keep it fun. Let the kids hey, don't the keep kids it fun. Sitting. <laughs> yeah, we want the kids to sit in the stands and, and watch their parents, you know, hoop and cheer them on and do some fun. So you just never know with us. I swear you never know with us. Like, yeah, man, we're the Lou Runs and and we are going to throw events. We're going to host good events and we're going to have fun doing it. It's going to look right. It's going to feel right. You know, and, and we just always want just want to put on a good showing, you know, and that's that's our biggest thing right now. Just make sure we put on a, a good showing, make sure we have the right people in place. Um, and just kind of make sure, just make everybody feel comfortable, you know. So, wh what do you think is next for Lou Runs moving in five years from now? Where do you see yourself? Uh, getting into the tournament spectrum, uh, really okay. hosting tournaments throughout the year, um, doing um, you know, some combines here and there, and just continue to just help develop the kids. You know, especially with the AU tournament, you know, the some of the stuff that you told me early on, you know, is some of the same stuff that we've already been in talks about, about the lack of, you know, the the, the payments, the having parents do scoreboard, um, nothing for the kids to do while they're there. You know, uh, you know, it's just a lot of stuff that goes on. And I think uh, they're making a lot of money doing it, but they're not pouring back into their brand to develop it. You know, but that's OK, though, because they better hurry up, because once we get into it, they might as well just forget everybody going to theirs 
because they're going to come to ours. And that's just how I feel. Like, oh, we're yeah. confident too. I'm saying that humbly, though, but, you know, once we start ours, they're going to have to figure out what they're going to want to do next because we going to come and swipe out everybody and we trying to run with it all. And then we going to go from there. So and that's those people watching right now like, uh, OK, all right, well, bring it. But, you know, I like it. It's, mm -hmm. it's good competition to have. You did touch on one thing. OK, I'm going to add that to my list of I can't stand this when I go to the gym and I see <laughs> kids run to the table on, an, you know, we, you know, as a mom and a parent, we got some good teams out there. You know, we're we're locked in. We're ready to see a play. Kids at the table playing on their phones. Mm -mm, nope. Get them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. None of that. None of You won't catch none of that at our events, man. Got we it. are. We're going to be professional for sure. OK. Well, we and forward. also, and also the platform sports talk show, we do be doing uh shows uh on uh you know in different areas, different places. So definitely mm -hmm. want to allow us to, if you don't mind, you know, have us to do some stuff there with you as well in the future. Man, man, y'all can pull up to the loot runs, y'all can do a live segment. I mean, yeah. come on, yeah, that's what we're doing. Hey, this is for the loot. So if you got a platform, you're a camera guy, you're a videographer, you take yep. pictures. You got a you got a podcast. Uh, you got a whatever you you want to come bring your camera. Hit me up. Put you on our. You know what I'm saying. Put you on the list. And man, come through for sure. Y'all y'all are welcome to come to come in and you know interview a player or two. You know interview the coaches. You know get you a quick interview. You know what I mean we we gonna be there. We just need y'all to pull on up and and, and do y'all thing as well. So it's all good. All good. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know, Misha Lay, that you got to go ahead and uh, step out. Is that right? Yeah, I do. I'm a little bit over, but I was excited. Um, I had an amazing time talking to you, um, Mr. Kennedy. I guess I call you Mr. Kennedy. Coach Kennedy. Um, yeah. My dog is, like, having a fit in the background, so and, and I yeah. got to be somewhere. So, But it was amazing talking to you. Um, I look forward to the event next week. I look forward to what you have uh, coming up, too, because... You're creating some buzz, right? A good buzz, yeah. bad buzz, whatever buzz, it's buzz, right? So um, I think people, they're going to come out to the event and um, I'm hoping that, you know, you know, we can connect, we'll come out and we can help with the platform. So. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Looking forward to it. I appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to y'all. Y'all doing something great for the city and um, y'all have a lot of good guests on here. So uh, shout out to everybody that's supporting y'all, y'all movement, you know, and just like you said, you eight years in, man, keep going, keep pushing, keep, just keep doing y'all thing, man, and um, it's gonna get there for sure. Most definitely. So, Michelle, a, thank you very much. Why don't you tell everybody if they all know who you are, tell them a little bit about <laughs> where they can find you at. Uh, so, my Instagram, Michelle, M I S H. There's my name right there. Just put an underscore baby behind it. That's me on IG, and then you can find me tomorrow at 10 a.m. I do uh, middays for St. Louis on 96.3. So, yeah, um, tap in. There we go. Tap, tap, tap in. Shout out to the wifey. All and right. then, uh, for our, I forgot, Ladies Night Radio, uh, the first Wednesday of the month, and that's coming up in about two weeks. So There you go. Stay tuned for that, y'all. So, Michelle, you have a great rest of your night. Be safe out there. Thank you. All right, y'all. Once again, this is your Wednesday Night Sports Delight, the platform sports talk show. As you have seen so far, this has been an incredible first part of our interview with our special guest, Mr. Robert Kennedy, he giving us, he dropping us dimes, tells us about Lou runs, talking about what he's been doing in the Lou and what he plans to do in the Lou in the nearby future. So we talked about all that great stuff. Now I want to get into more about your life, what you've been mm -hmm. going through, because one of the biggest things about our show is that people see the outside. You know, yeah. they see what, what you've been doing. Oh, he's a coach. Oh, he's done this, but they don't know about. Yeah the grind you know the struggle yeah. of what you've been through from here to how mm -hmm. you're rising up to this level so yeah. you brought up earlier about you was in what sixth seventh grade get, yeah. getting cut from basketball but you was like one of the tallest or the tallest kid yeah uh, you know on that team tell us about that growth spurt i'm pretty sure you was like what what height and then all of a sudden you woke up you was like wait a minute i'm Six foot nine now. Like, what well, tell us about that? I was in a, I just remember like coming out of fifth grade that summer, and I don't know. My mom was like, I slept a lot that summer. I just be in the house just sleeping. But mm. you know, I at that time I ain't thinking I'm about to be tallest person in the school. And then um went back to school and I was 
I mean, I look up, I'm the tallest person in, in my class. You know, everybody just like, like, wow, you know, and then I try it out and I ain't make it. And that's just what that was. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to my big brother. It's my big brother, man. What's up, bro? But uh, I just was like, uh, like, man, I got to I got to play this sport because all my friends, for whatever reason, could play basketball. And I'm just like. Y'all not about to just keep leaving me going to the game and going to practice and I'm just going home or I'm sitting in the stands watching all the cheerleaders cheer for y'all. And I'm like, nah, I want some of that love too. Like I want them to say, shoot it, Robert, shoot, shoot it. Right. Like I want to hear all of that. I want my name to be in that. You know what I'm saying? And I got to it. You know what I mean? I end up getting I end up getting what I wanted. You know, what I, mean? I just kind of just kept it going, man. I I was one of those kids, uh, you know, like I said, grew up in the projects, man, uh, had a lot of good influence around me. Of course, you know, growing up in the area where it's poverty, you're going to always be faced with the, the trial of the drugs and the guns and the violence and, you know, girls getting pregnant early age and stuff like that. So I was able to, you know, kind of stay clear of it, but still like have friends that were like, in real life stuff, you know, and I try to be trying, I don't try to, I can't say too much about it, but I had like real friends, you know, that, that were, that went to prison, you know, for, for drugs, for murders, mm -hmm. for robbing mm -hmm. people, you know, and these were my friends. So it's just like, these are people I grew up with. So my childhood was different from the average kid. Now, like I used to send letters to prisons and, and um uh, put help, that grandma put money on her books while they're in jail. Like I was doing that in high school, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, a, a it was different for me, you know, and I got a lot of respect, you know, just from just, just a young guy, just showing love to all the guys that's in the neighborhood. And, and a lot of those guys was telling me like, man, you got a chance, bro. You're not, you're not hanging out here with us. You're not selling no drugs. You damn sure ain't going to touch no gun. So you might as well, you know, so it was just more so just I had some real friends. I think nowadays kids don't have real friends. You know what right. I'm saying? And like nowadays, these friends are tell their friend we finna go over here and do this. They don't care if we get caught. Everybody going to go to jail, you know, instead of saying, nah, bro. OK, we're going to make a decision to go, but you ain't going. Especially if they, you know, so it's kind of like that. That was like my upbringing. You know, I just had and then. <laughs> all the former dope boys that were back in the day like used to tell me like you not selling nothing you need something we just gonna give it to you you know but my mom did a great job of keeping food in the house and had my granny you know everybody around me you know always had i always had stuff as a kid so i never wanted anything it's just i knew not to do certain stuff and i had people around me that wouldn't allow me to do it either so that's pretty much it that's what's up, man. That's a great story, man. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, just a lot know. of other stuff, man. I can get to a whole book, man. You know, I, I love lost, it. I love it. I lost my best friends uh in one year. I lost two to a drunk driver. Mm. A year later, lost another best friend, a uh, childhood friend, murdered him. You know, I mean, these are the guys I was with the day before. You know what I'm saying? And then a day later, they gone. And then a year later another one gone you know what i'm saying so i think a lot of kids you know they haven't they probably been through some stuff but they probably ain't really been through it i've been through like real depression you know what i'm saying like i really was at a time where like i was down on my it like drained me as a basketball player because those are the guys that went to the gym with me that did a lot of stuff for me you know what i'm saying and it's like i lost i lost a lot of motivation some people can use it but I, I end up just, it just drained me, you know, because I really, you know what I'm saying, love my guys, you know what I'm saying? It was just like one of those, what's next? Basketball ain't it. I don't feel it no more. I just kind of went out the window, you know, I'm going to start getting into helping these kids out, you know, and, and just teaching them that. But, yeah, like I get mental health, man. I, I was in it for sure. I was definitely depressed for a little minute, but I end up having strong people around me, you know, my mom, my brother's you know, uh, friends, you know, come by the house. Come on, man, get in the car. We're going to ride, you know, just kind of getting me out of certain situations. So it was cool, man. Like I, I had a good, I had a good support system when it all happened for sure. 
So speaking of support, who was that person or persons that helped you along in regards to teaching you about the game of basketball? That taught me about the game of basketball? I would say uh, Coach Mike, man, uh, Michael Williams. Uh, he's from Madison. Uh, he's like a father figure, man. He was one of those guys I remember shooting on a on a basketball rim. I want to say like freshman year, I was shooting around at Venice School. I was outside by myself. I just see a black uh, Corsica pull up. I remember like it was yesterday. He pulled up, black dude, six foot two, black shades on, bald head. He come to the gate. He like, hey, young man, come here. I'm looking at him like, I don't know you, but yeah, what's up? He like, hey, man, you, uh, you, 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 you play, you play ball? I'm like, yes, sir. He like, you want to play for my summer team? I'm like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, I want to play. And then uh, he took me to an Eagles tryout. But he was the coach at Madison, so I was still at Venice. So my sophomore year that summer, I ended up playing with Madison throughout the summer. No, my freshman year, my freshman year, going into my freshman year, I ended up playing for Madison throughout the summer. But I ended up making the Eagles team 15 under team, and he was one of the coaches. So I was able to get out, get introduced to the real game of basketball through him. You know, and then he started training me. He started teaching me, you know, how to dribble more, how to shoot more, footwork, jumping, all of that stuff. Like, I was raw. And then when I got to the Eagles, it was just like, okay, this is your development time. You know, and I think uh, Coach Mike played a very, very instrument instrument piece, man. Uh, me and his son to this day is still best friends. Uh, and, man, it's just one of – he one of them guys where, you know, rest his soul. And he passed away years ago, but – he he's my he's my guardian angel you know what i'm saying when it comes to the basketball spectrum man he allowed me to you know be a kid kept me in a kid place uh he was just that father figure man you know because i lost my dad when i was like 12 so he was just one of them guys where yeah man i see some potential in you so everything i do every decision i make every choice i make good or bad i think about what he would think you know and then um, I just kind of moved from there. So, so that's it. So that's that was my real introduction to basketball, for real. That's what's up. So, uh, Madison High, tell us about that time frame uh, of you being there, your career, and yeah. then, and also how was that recruitment process before you end up going to you know Murray State Mineral and then uh, Murray State. Tell us so, about that process of going through that recruitment stage. I, I was at Venice for two years. Like I said, they shut down. And then I ended up uh, going to the rival school, which is Madison. You know, I knew Venice was going to shut down because my auntie was on the board. So she kind of was giving me some game like, hey, this school not going to be open in the next year or two. I didn't want to. I feel like I need to make a move. You know, and I was telling my mom, like, I need to get out of this school because if they shut down next year, I'm going to have nowhere to play. So I might as well just go now. You know, and uh, they didn't end up shutting down, but I ended up leaving anyway. And uh, don't get me wrong. They were mad. I'm I'm a Venice Red Devil forever. You know what I'm saying? I'm Venice all the way, you know, and uh, they were upset. My town was upset. I'm not going to lie. It was a uh, it was a little small moment where, you know, I didn't come outside a lot. Um, I, I kind of just kind of just went to school, went home, went to school, went home because a lot of the. The younger guys, like around my age, you know, they were just a little upset. Like, man, how you going? And even during the game, the rival game, like the high school coach didn't shake my hand. It was mm. just, it was just like, like, damn, man, like you left us, but we don't mess with you right now. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, it wasn't no hard feelings. I just had to do what was best for me, and um, you know, and people put me in a good position to go to Madison. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I really enjoyed my time at Madison. Um, I love the teachers. I love the environment when I got there. You know, a lot of those kids that were at Madison, it was just like Venice, but like they grew up with each other. You know what I'm saying? I didn't grow up with them. So they were already 10 years ahead of me as far as going to elementary school together, middle school, then high school. Then here I just come from the other town and I just play ball with y'all, but I don't know y'all like that. And so it was more so me trying to fit in and um get to know everybody and you know get that good feel but uh it was cool though i i enjoyed my i enjoyed myself at madison so shout out to them you know for accepting me 
you know, because, you know, you don't get a chance to go to a rival school and then they just be like, ah, you cool. But no, nah, it was cool. It was real good, though. And then as far as just getting my recruitment process, um, I ended up going to mineral area, you know, because I just felt like I needed to go Juco. I was still raw. I knew I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to go to a four year. I had an opportunity to go to a four year. Don't get me wrong. But I think the people around me were very, very realistic with where I was at development wise. That's a lost art now because you got coaches who might have some good players, but they may not be ready to go straight to Division one. You know, and that's just a reality. Be OK with that. Nowadays, parents are scared of junior college. Kids think junior college is shunned up on. And it's like you go to JUCO and those guys are better than any guys of Division One, only because they been battle tested. You know what I'm saying? It's real development going on in these JUCOs. And I think a lot of Division Ones, they'll accept you as a freshman. But if they feel like you ain't developed, they redshirt you. Mm. And it's like I would have been better off going to junior college. If you're going to redshirt me, you know what I'm saying? You'd be better off just going down and just getting that playing time. And uh, that it's just like a lost thing. And um, I just feel like, you know, Division One schools, you know, they just – and then the kid leave the next year. So it's right. like, what, like, what are you doing? Like, how you have me come here, redshirt me, and then you don't want me to come back all of a sudden. You know, it's just, so it's just weird. So kids lose out. So that's just uh that's just my my perspective on it, man. Uh I had a good time at Mineral Area. Uh I did very good. I was a solid, I was a really solid student, done, done my work, did what I was supposed to do. Uh fast forward to like my sophomore year, kind of getting into my my bag a little bit now. So now I'm starting right. to play some ball now. You know, uh I went on a man, I went on like a 12, 13 game streak, man. Uh I don't know, maybe averaging anywhere between 12 to 15, 16 points. Uh, played against a team at Merrimack. We, we was at Merrimack. I think it was at a tournament. It was probably over 60 college coaches there. And uh, we were losing. And um, we ended up coming back. And I had a good show in the second half. Uh, and next thing you know, I had about 34, 30, 50 colleges ringing. Wow. Tate t- line, like, who is Rob Kennedy? Where did he come from? Who is this kid? Da, 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 da. And it went from there. And then like three games later, I tore my meniscus. My teammate, he might be watching right now, but my, my oh, teammate, man. he took a charge. And that's just that one. Like he do the dirty work. He a dog on defense. And he took a charge and he slid into my left leg. And I heard Ooh. his ball. Pop. I, oh, my knee. And I went down and I was just like, damn, I thought it was over for me. You know what I'm saying? I did my surgery. I wake up in my surgery. Guess who's in my surgery? Bobby Knight and Pat Knight is in the hospital. What? And I'm like, what is going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is going on? They like, man, we like you. They came all the way down to see me. They had got my film and they were just like, oh, yeah, we like him. So. I verbally committed to Texas Tech, just like on some, I'm coming there. I want to go there. Like, he the first coach to pop up. I know who he is. I know he crazy. I'm crazy, too. I'm ready. But then Tate gave me that, boy, you is not ready to go play for him. Like, mm. so, not ready. And I knew, and, and that's Tate being honest with me. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was ready to do it. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of stuff transpired, too. Um, I was, I had signed to come back to the school. So they were taking forever to like release my paperwork and, you know, just kind of taking a long time. So to, uh, Pat Knight ended up calling me like maybe two weeks later, like, hey, we're going we gonna to back off. We haven't heard nothing from the school. So good good luck on your, your transition. And and I'm like, damn, you know, so and then I just kind of went home. I told him I want to go home for a little minute. And then Murray State came knocking on the door, McNeese State, Texas Tech, no, Tennessee Tech. Uh, who else? Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I had like a small talk with Oklahoma, but it wasn't a long talk. It was more so just on some come in and play behind this person. Blake coming in the next year, play behind him, and then your third year. And I'm like, nah, that's not really interesting. So whatever. But just kind of went from there. And um, Murray State got off the phone with me that night. Uh, 
I told them I wanted, I was interested. I want to meet. And they happened to drive to St. Louis like that same night. And we woke up and then we went and ate breakfast with them at uh shenanigans. Was it shenanigans? Was that the, the spot? Uh, it was downtown. It was a restaurant. I want to say it was across from the uh, Kenna Plaza. Oh, no, you're talking about uh, uh, Mike Shannon's. Mike Shannon. I don't know why I said Shannon. I'm thinking about the movie Shannon's. But, yeah, but Mike Shannon's, we ended up going yeah. there. And uh, I took a visit, man, and I loved it. And I just ended up choosing Murray, man. It was a great situation. Uh, we won the OBC my first year. Uh, okay. I started yeah, my second year. We lost to North Carolina by four. So it was the same year that George Mason went on a run to, uh, I want to say. Really? Yeah. Listen, we wow. We okay. watched them beat Michigan State. So we in the tunnel. They come in the tunnel. Yeah, man, we me and Mays is running this. Man, y'all better go out there. And, so it kind of put a battery in our back. Like them boys hyped us up, and we went out there and gave North Carolina a run for their money, man. And we fell short. We lost by four, but it was a good game. It was a great game between Mick Cronin and Roy Williams. Uh, we fought to the end, and uh, it was really cool, man. And uh, you know, and then we just got a chance to experience the OVC, the tournament. I think uh, it's for every kid, man, that go to college, man, you want to experience the NCAA tournament. If you get to the first round, or second round, third round, that is the experience is dope. Like from the so, hotel, and go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So stay right there because most people who go to college may not experience this. But from your point of view, when you realize that you were going to the big dance, of, of course, based off you in the championship, how was that feeling to know that you're about to be in something as big as March Madness? Uh, I think um, I didn't really feel it until I think I was sitting on a bench. And I just happened to look. This was like maybe once tip off started and I'm sitting on a bench and I'm looking in the crowd and it's crazy. So I started getting butterflies. Like I remember telling my teammates, like, man, I don't know if I'm ready to play. Like I'm nervous, bro. Like it's cameras everywhere. It's just like the experience is like no other, man. It's almost like an out of body experience because when you, because when I finally got in the game, it was just like, damn, I know I can't, I can't mess up, like I can't, mm. mess, I can't mess up, you know what I'm saying? But I ended up getting a tech, you know, because Hansborough ended up elbowing me, and I ended up came, came down and kind of retaliated. So the ref was like, look, chill out, you know, and it was just like one of those. But yeah, it was just like, man, it was, it was real tough, man. It was tough. It was a great experience for sure. So for those eight graders or even the high schoolers who may be watching right now, mm -hmm. uh, the young boys or girls, explain to them the transition, the, the difference between playing high school ball where you probably were that guy or that girl to now going to a different level where you're on a team with people who were in the same position as you who were yeah. that guy or that girl. Be ready to play your role. Uh, be ready to play your role, whatever that role is. You got to accept that role, uh, you know, because they're going to recruit you because, of course, you're the best player on your high school team. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're recruiting you to be the best player on their college team. Like, don't get me wrong. You get in a situation to where you can do it. But for the most part, a lot of kids are not being recruited to be the best player on a college team. You got to think you're coming into a situation to where, it ain't just all freshmen. You got some juniors, seniors, second year seniors, maybe a third year senior. Like, so you you up against a different beast if you think you're gonna walk in and be a true freshman. You gotta really, really just be special. When I say special, you gotta be a Jason Tatum special. Like that's like a walk in true freshman. You know, you know a Carmelo Anthony. Like you gotta be a true, true freshman to really get that. And if you're not there. Most of the time, you're going to be a role player, you know, and I understood that, you know, even in high school, you know, I was we had a we had a hell of a team in high school. Like at Madison, we were like a junior college team, like when nobody under six foot, like we were big, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't average the most points on my high school team. I came in and I played a role, you know what I mean? But when I went to college, I knew I wasn't going to be that 20 point score or having those games like I was. In high school, I had to take the charges. 
I was playing the dirty work. You know what I'm saying? I was down on the post using my athleticism to be the, the, the battle or, you know what I mean? Just kind of giving my team that extra spunk. So, and I have my games where I had 17, you know, 15, 20. I'll showcase that throughout the season. So it wasn't like I was just sitting on the bench and just not doing anything. Like when I get in the game, I'm playing hard. I'm taking charges. You know, I'm guarding the big man the right way. I'm doing everything coach asked me to ask me to do. You know, I might take a quick shot here and there, but that's just Rob Kennedy. That's just what I do, you know, but I just take quick shots. So that's just what that right. is. And coaches knew that. But other than that, I, I just played my role. I didn't I didn't care about who started. I didn't care how much playing time I got. As long as I got a chance to play on that jersey every night uh, to showcase with my team at the end of the day, like I'm a team person. I'm a team guy. So that's what I that's what I loved about just going to college. It wasn't just about the individual accolades for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a chance to really play with some great guys and develop good relationships with them. So I'm a team person, man. I want to, I want to win. But how we do it, we need to win, win the game. That's it. I don't care if I get 20 or 10. Like I want to win. Flat out. So from the buzz that you experienced at uh, Murray state going to winning the OBC plan in the, uh, in the big dance. Uh, and I may be wrong if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the school didn't get that much more buzz until this guy came around. John Morant. Got a lot of buzz. Um, like I said, when we were there, we felt like what we what we did in the people before us, it's kind of like an era thing. You know, he had the era before when we got there that they were – see, Murray State was already winning OBC championships. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They like the Dukes. They like the Duke of the was, was the Duke of the OVC. Could nobody get a chip without going through Murray State? So I think a lot of people got to understand that first. So they've been winning chips. They've been getting to the tournament. Now they wasn't getting past the first round, but they was always getting to the tournament, always winning OVC. And um, uh, I think after our year, the next group you had Denaro Thomas, you had Tony Easley, you know, you had uh Isaiah Cannon. A lot of those guys like campaign, you know, that's in the league. Like, oh, yeah, of, yeah. A lot of those guys came in and set the and they put this, they turned the school up to another notch. And then okay. John Morant just came and took that wave and he just went all the way to the to the NBA. Like, he just went all the way superstar, NBA star, all star status with it, you know, and uh, getting a chance to see him early on. I remember, uh, they came down to play SIUE. I say, Ja, I'm in the locker room. I say, Ja, I need 40 tonight. Shit, dap them up. I need 40 tonight, little bro. He mm. looked at me and said, That's easy. Mm. Yeah, 40 with six with six minutes to go in the second half. And they took him out. I say, that's that's superstar status right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how you put the ball in the hole. And they won the game, so it was just more so like, man, it was pretty dope. But yeah, you get a getting a chance to see him was was a uh, phenomenal man during that era for sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you had your college life, Mineral mm -hmm. Area, Murray State. Now you you talking about one transition? Talk about playing overseas. You know, playing in in, in a foreign land with people you don't know what they saying half the time. Just tell us about that experience of playing overseas and how much of a culture shock that was uh, for you. A, a huge culture shock. Uh, I can give you the backstory all the way until – so I leave here. So I'm, I'm going to Portugal. I get to uh, I get to New Jersey. Had a layover in New Jersey. And then um, I get to Lisboa, which is the capital, and um, I get stopped. For one, I'm going to give you a backstory. So I'm going to backtrack. So my agent was like, look. I'm working on a deal. You got your passport. I said, of course I do. I didn't have my passport. So this is like on a Monday. Oh, Maybe God. Sunday night. He like, I'm going to call you, let you know woo, 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 I got a deal. Tuesday, he says, man, I got a deal. You leave, let's say, Friday. I'm like, oh, man, I leave Friday. I ain't got no passport. So I go to a travel agent, pay her like 700 some dollars to get a passport within 24 hours. So she had to like drive to Chicago to get it and bring it back. 
So she she came back on Thursday morning. And then um I got the passport, packed my bags, I left. So I get to New Jersey, I fly over to Lisbo. They they book it's like they booked me a little bit. It's like they put me in like a holding cell. Cause they thought I was trying to flee the country. Cause I got my passport so fast. And they like, well, this just got issued three days ago. Why are you here? Like, are you running from something? And I'm like, I'm not running from anything. I'm going to go play basketball. So that was like my first experience to know, like, like, damn, like they're not playing. They're not playing. Like, you just can't just pop in people country like that. Like they really, really, they really like picky on what's going on. They pay attention to detail. So I was in a room with like some Africans, man. And I had like three gold chains on earrings in. So they looking at me talking, I'm banging on the door. Like, man, you got to get me out of here. Like I supposed to be me, my coach. And, and then he finally come back. Somebody come with a translator. It was like, all right, man, we're going to try to help you. Uh, can you get your contract? And I had to like pull it up in English and, it was just a whole mess. And then they end up figuring out everything was a one and everything was good. So they like put me on a cart, drove me fast through the airport to get to my coach and um, the person that, that was handling me at the time. So it was, it was like a, one of those like, damn, what if I couldn't get all of this information? Who would have known? Like I was in a holding cell, like in an airport, you know, away from my family. Like, so it's kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was uh, it was very, very eye opening, you know, and then just being overseas, period, man. I was young, so I was ready to explore the world. So I got a chance to go to the clubs. I got a chance to, uh, you know, just the nightlife. Uh, I got a chance to watch a lot of soccer because we had a football club. So I played for a club called Electrico Football Club and they had a soccer team. So my first time really seeing soccer like in person it's crazy, man. The soccer fans are crazy. So. We lost one game by like one. They tore up the whole town. They breaking bottles. So they like, man, we got to get you home. You cannot be out here. You know what I'm saying? Because you're American. They, anybody can do something to you because they just they just mad. So stuff like that. Um, mm. Games. The games used to be crazy, man. I mean, when you say, see here in America, like in the states, they don't let you. They don't let the fans be fans. You right. Know, I say fans. They don't let you have clappers, no whistles, no horns, like no, you it's hard, like over there, overseas, man. You hear horns, big wing, man, like clappers, like you hear them banging on stuff. It's like it's a live environment. And you come here, it's, everybody just sit there and just like, like you hear a whistle, where everybody tell you, no, 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 you can't do that. But over there, man, they is live, man. Like it's the the crowd is. The crowd is crazy. So the, the support is ridiculous, man. And I was just about to say, like, when I think about international games, all I see is the players playing. And then in the background, you're seeing streamers. You're seeing red fireballs going through the crowd. I'm like, what yeah. is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. You hear all of that stuff. And um, when I played in China, so Portugal was – I like Portugal. It was like a, a real traditional village. You know, I had to eat like rooster soup before a game. It was like a tradition for the team. Um, all I ate was potatoes and, and fish. You know, they finally I finally found a restaurant and kind of showed them how to like cook fish for me. Because the first time they cooked fish, they left the eyes in it and all type of stuff. So I oh, went really with all of that. So, yeah, so I was. I, w- so I would have been done. <laughs> I would have been done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's a tradition to eat the eye, too. So, you know, I had to eat the eye just to kind of be a part of the culture, you know. No. Yeah, you had to, like, the rooster soup. It had the rooster foot in it. You had to, like, kind of slurp the soup with the, with the foot for good luck. It's just all that. And then I was I wasn't used to hearing, like, roosters crowing like 5 a.m. in the morning you hear like over man in my head over 100 roosters you just start hearing them just going off and I'm like man what am I over here doing but it's just how the village was you know and then you want fresh food you know sometimes they kill it and then they bring it out and it's cooked and it's good and it's really fresh you know so Portugal was really good I really enjoyed myself there uh, and then I took like a year off, came home for a little minute, and then I ended up uh, getting a deal over in China to go play over there for a while. 
And um, that was a whole culture shock, but it was really, really good. Uh, they are really, really innovative and creative. And the technology was crazy while we was over there. I mean, we had iPads with like Android systems on it. It was just it was just a different time. You know what I'm saying? Clubs was really good. Uh, <laughs> Pizza Hut was dining only. It wasn't no. Mm. Yeah, it was just like they they delivered. That's the first time I really experienced like a Uber for real. I mean, uh, like a like a DoorDash. You know, uh, you can order from McDonald's and they'll get on a cart, a motor cart, and come bring the food to you. So we were doing a lot of ordering food, and we come back to the states. We like, but we can't even order. The only thing we can order is pizza. You can't order no McDonald's, no Jack in the Box, no nothing. But over there, you can order from their restaurants and they'll. They gonna come bring it on a motorbike, so I feel like they were way more advanced than us at some point. So when your mom and I, if she's watching, shouts out to mom. But um, when she found out that you were traveling overseas, how did she take it, and how long did, she, did it take for her to accept that? Man, I think my mom always knew. Like I was one of, I'm her youngest. You know, of course, I'm the baby, but I think. At an early age, I showed a lot of responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even in high school, like my mom lived in the next town. Like I said, I went to Madison and Coach Mike was a very, very influential guy. He had like four houses. So in high school, as a 16 year old kid, we had our own house. He had his son, me and uh, one of my other friend, um, Chauncey, who passed away. Like we were all living. We were all teenage kids living in the house by ourselves. And we were still mm -hmm. going to school every day, coming home, cleaning up the house. Mm -hmm. My mom would come bring groceries over, stack the refrigerator up, make sure we had food in the crib. Uh, on school night, we have friends over, but we kicking them out. Hey, man, we got to get them go to school tomorrow. Y'all got to go home. So, like, we we were responsible kids at 16, 17 years old. And you just don't get that nowadays. You couldn't put three kids in a house by themselves and the parents leave out and do all of that. Like, you couldn't do that nowadays, man. Them kids are being there smoking, drinking, having parties, ain't going to school. It'll it'd be all type of stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? So we just had a good situation going on back then. And I think my mom just kind of understood, like, he's he's well off mentally and responsible enough to understand, like, what he's doing. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's just what that was, you know. And I believe that's her right there. Is that Doris yeah, Anderson? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's my mom, man. Love you, mom, Dukes. That's what's up. Once again, shout out to your moms and to all the sports moms out there, or moms in general. We ain't nothing yeah, without you, cool. so we appreciate y'all. Yeah. So, after playing basketball, what? When did you realize that you wanted to become a coach? Man, it was uh, it was it was um. Uh, I think I was a. Uh, I was doing um. I was working at St. Louis Job Court. Uh, I was, I was, a um, I was a RA on the dorm when I first started, uh, end up, like I said, I was heavy in church for a while. Uh, I sent our church, uh, one of our deacons, he was a center director at the job course. So he really took liking to me and I told him, I want to just kind of looking for work, man. I was just really just chilling for real though. And then, uh, I was like, well, you know what, let me go ahead and find me a job and, uh, they gave me the worst dorm. They gave me the Martin Luther King dorm on, on St. Louis Job Corp. So just imagine <laughs> these boys supposed to honor Martin Luther King, right? But right. They, they were terrorizing this place, man. And uh, oh man, they put a they put a young man myself in in the in the trenches with these kids on Goodfellow, man. These these wild boys, they gang bang and they selling drugs they smoking weed i'm just like man what is wrong with these kids but i was able to grasp their attention you know when i say grasp their attention i go to the wreck and we'll play basketball games i was having a whole center coming to the gym because we in this we in the gym running full court games like 20 minute halves i'm hooping on my break like a real basketball game so i started Helping out with the coach a little bit, training the kids. I ain't know nothing about training, but I was just like putting cones up and just tell them, do this, do this, get to the basket. And then, but like as far as my job, it was like I had the worst dorm. So I had to like teach these guys how to be young men, how to be respectful, how to be responsible, how to 
honor their time, you know, how to really try to, you know, put themselves in a better position, you know? So what I did was I, I kind of use a psychological effect. I tricked them. I took the worst kids on dorm that had the influence and I put them in power. <laughs> like I said, well, since, since everybody's scared of you, 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 and you, I want to have a meeting with y'all, but I need y'all to run this dorm. You're going to be my captain. You're going to be my co-captain. You're going to be my security. You're going to be my custodial guy. And this is the task I need for y'all to do for this dorm. And then when they start saying, man, get up, it's time to clean, move your bed, man, get them clothes up. Come out here and wash these walls. Like all of that stuff. They start doing all of that stuff and controlling this dorm for me. And next thing you know, we used to have to do dorm scores every week. 360 is the highest score you can get because they'll send in like the custodians and people like the center director. They'll come in, look at your dorm and see how clean they look at the floors. If you got black spots, it's almost like the army, like, they're going right. to come in, make sure if they beds tuck right, or they're going to open up their closets and make sure they, they, everything is lined up. It's the clothes are up, uh, all of this stuff. So they're going to make sure this, the sinks clean. You get what I'm saying though. So, right. We started winning the dorm wars. I mean, three, four months. We getting three sixties every week, every week for like four month run. And they called me in the office one day and was like, "We trying to figure out what you didn't did with these kids because your dorm is the top dorm. Matter of fact, we want to offer you a job over here as a counselor." So I jumped ship. It wasn't even six months I was there. I started being a counselor, you know, so, but unluckily I was doing my thing counseling too. I was bringing kids through the program. We taming out, they getting their HSDs within two weeks. I'm on their bumpers. I'm making sure they're in their classes. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And then I get laid off by my neck. My neck did a big budget cut and they mm -hmm. laid me off. I was the first, I was the last counselor to get hired. So I was the first one to go and I got laid off and fast forward to the coaching part. I was sitting at home. I think I was talking to a friend of mine, Darvin, and um, he was like, man, I'm coaching for the Eagles, bro. You should come up to the tryouts. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to come pull up. But I ain't doing no coaching, bro, because I don't know what I'm doing. I, I showed up in jeans, T-shirt. I was just, like, really chilling. And next thing you know, he, like, uh, you know, I go to the floor. I talked to Coach Golden, some of the other coaches that was there. And I was like, what's up, y'all? y'all doing? Da -da -da. And then after the tryouts, they was like, and we got a, 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 a Eagles alum in here, man. Come down to the huddle. And I'm like, man, nah, I ain't trying to do all of that. Like, I ain't trying to talk to no kids. I'm cool. Like, I'm just chilling. And I was like, nah, man, come tell them you used to play for the program. You won a national title with us. And so I kind of let the kids know, like, hey, man, this program is really good, man. If you make it, you got a good opportunity. You know, long story short, I'm talking to the president, Tim, introducing myself to him. He was new. And. Tat just came out of nowhere and was like, what's up, little bro? How you been? I'm like, man, I'm good, man. I'm good. And then he just like, man, you, man, you, you can coach with me. And I was like, bro, I don't know how to coach. So I'm just going to take everything you say, and then I'm going to try to put my spin on it. But I'm going to ask you questions along the way. And that's how I started coaching for real. You know, uh, Tad gave me an opportunity to get under his wing. And uh, this right around the time I think he left, he won that soul dance. And then he left so then and took the CBC job like the following that following summer, that summer or the next summer. So it was yeah. like a really big leap for him. And uh, I was just very, very fortunate to be in that situation. So that's how I started coaching. Man, that's an incredible story right there. And just being a, a positive influence is what is needed more of. That's why I had the coaches round table last week to get that started because more people need to see uh, more positive influences in their life. So that's yeah. awesome. You mentioned earlier coaching girls. What is it about coaching girls compared to coaching uh, coaching boys? Well, I'll give you a backstory, man. I got a lot of stories. So Coach Gray, our founder of the Eagles, he passed away a few years ago. And uh, I was coaching, like I said, I was coaching with Corey Frazier, and I was coaching on the EYBL side of the, of the game with 17U. You know, So I was really enjoying the high flying. I was enjoying the college coaches on the sideline. So that was our 16U girls. That was a few years ago. Uh, I was doing a lot of stuff with the boys, and I had that aspiration to be like a boys coach. You know, I wanted to, like, get to college. I wanted to do all of that stuff. So I said, well, you know what? Um, I'm going to 
kind of see, but I don't know. So Coach Gray ended up starting the girls program. And uh, he asked me one summer, like, when you going to come over here? I told him, never. Like, I'm not coming over there. Like, I love the boys' side. I'm cool. I'm trying to get to college with it. You know, I just kind of want to just do my thing. I let that summer go by. Next summer come by, he asked me again. That third summer, we was running a tryout at Hazelwood East. And it's Frage, Gray, Golden. Like, they all sitting on the sideline. I had just finished the boys' tryouts. And he was like, well, you want to stay and run the girls' tryouts? I'm like, yeah, I run it. I ran it through a tryout, got everybody in place. I did my thing. And then after the tryouts, I, all I hear is, yeah, welcome to welcome to 15 you girls head coach. Mm. I was like, who, me? And Fraze was like, hey, the Big Eagle, the Big Eagle has spoken, man. He, he won't, hey, I ain't got nothing to do with it, tall. Like, it's on you. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm staying over here. He was like, and Coach Ray was like, nah, man, you the coach over here now. So welcome to the welcome to the girl side. You know what I'm saying? And that's just why I started on the girl side because I did it because of Coach Gray. You know, man, I think that summer he passed away. So I fell more in love with it because now at this point, I'm thinking I got to do this for Gray. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to honor his word. Like, I'm a real, I'm real big on, you know, honor and, and respect. You know what I'm saying? And especially for the, for those that gave me an opportunity like you'll forever be in debt with me because I'm always feel like I owe you. And I think with coach gray, I just feel like I owe him forever. You know what I'm saying? He asked me to be in a position inside this program, you know what I'm saying? And, and then, uh, you know, and I just want to continue to honor that whether it's on the coaching side, on the coordinating side, on the training side, I just want to always do something with BBE slash St. Louis Eagles because I was a 15 year old kid trying to figure out life. And the program put me in a situation to where I can be amongst great men and do it and learn something from it, you know. And then also with the girls, man, just the girl side, it's just way more detailed, you know what I'm saying? And you can you can really teach them a lot, you know. Uh man, I totally agree. Yeah, they listen, man. And then you know, the game, you know, if you really if you really think about basketball for real. The women's side is the best side. Dude, dude, wait, because, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah. our, favorite, our favorite fan, Miss Dub, can't contest to this. I've said it probably about maybe 10 times over the last uh, eight years that we've had the platform sports talk show, small plug. But I've, yep. said, I've said that the women's game is, yeah. is, is better because they have to work harder to achieve a goal. You know yep. what I'm saying? With, with the men's game, they can easily just make up a shot by, by dunking because they got, you know, seven foot, seven foot five and six foot eight and six foot nine. And it takes less skill to achieve a goal. Yeah. With, with women's basketball, it's so much more skill that's required to achieve a goal. And that's why mm -hmm. the respect, I think, is, is, is yeah. rising more for the girls' yeah. game because of how hard they got to, the, the adversity they have to go through yeah. to make a basket. Yeah, and I tell grassroots coaches, man, you know, I tell like even even like I said, I'm the sports director at the Y. You know, I tell all my, I tell all them coaches, man, that uh, watch the women's game. If you're gonna develop kids, watch women basketball. Like flat out, it's gonna tell you, it's gonna give you the whole format on how to develop the kids. The high flying stuff. Don't look at NCAA men's or NBA, like don't look at it. Watch just watch women's basketball. You'll be able to teach the kids the right things to do. Now, if they get athletic and able to dunk, they're gonna do that anyway. They're natural, gonna be natural athletes. But to, to really teach them the game, you gotta just go back to the roots of it. And yeah, for sure, Tiff, man. Shout out, shout out to Coach Gray, man. Play for Gray. That's like the that's like our motto, you know what I'm saying? With with, with BBE, man. And um, and we just try to live by that, man. For sure, play for great all day. So, tell us about you becoming a uh, skills developmental coach and, and uh, trainer. Uh, goes back to Corey Frazier. Uh, came to Frazier one summer and was like, "Look, man, I wanna I'm gonna get into the training stuff, but you know, I wanna do it the right way. I don't just wanna get into it, and then I'm just trying to figure it out. You know, I wanna kind of know." the ins and outs. 
And uh, he took me under his wing, man. I did a lot of stuff with him when he was working with Chris Sweat. Got a chance to be on a lot of a lot of these guys that's in the NBA now, like doing their little summer workouts, uh, you know, like Wayne Gabriel. Uh, of course, uh, like Nick Smith play for the play for the Hornets. Um, you know, guys like Francis Accord, they went to Salou. Got a chance to see Caleb Love development at an early age, working with Frage. Um, yeah, so it was just like a lot, man. And uh, I think him taking me under his wing kind of allowed me to develop in my own space as well. You know, and then when I finally, finally felt like I had some some real motion with it, I started seeing the game differently. I started seeing like what the kids lack, what they don't lack, you know, and then I kind of fast forward to today. I'm more so not like a I'm a I'm a skill development coach. Don't get me wrong, but like I'm more so on the the shooting aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm more so like locked in on movement, how to get your shot off, when to get your shot off, certain certain steps, certain repetitional steps that you're going to always do in the game. You need to work on it, how to get your shot off, you know, and then getting up a lot of shots is so important. It's a lost art nowadays. You know, kids can't shoot mid ranges. You know, I tell parents all the time, if your kid can't shoot a mid range jump shot, don't expect them to have longevity. If they can't mm. shoot, don't expect them to. If they ain't just dunking all out right, you know, they're going to have to right. figure out how to score the ball. You know what I'm saying? So it's just uh, it's a lot, man. It's a lot of ways to skin the cat, you know, and um, you just got to have what you good at, have a niche for it and just go for it. You know, so I try to stay away from the whole dribbling and trying to teach you this and teach you that like i might teach you one or two moves but like that's just about mm -hmm. it for me you know other than that you come to me to help with your jump shot to help with your shot because everybody in st louis is training i want to get out of that bubble i'm not gonna lie i don't want to just be in a bubble with everybody else and they're doing the same thing cones everywhere i'm not doing all of that you know and phrase taught me that you know, so he said, man, forget them cones, man. Throw them cones in the trash. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Repetition is everything. So, and that's where I'm at with it. Got you. So, uh, I want to pose a question for those watching the show uh, right now and to our special guest. Uh, something I thought about. And prior to this year, I've always been big on March Madness, especially for the men. Mm -hmm. But as we just kind of brought up about the girls game. For some reason this year, and even like this past Sunday when they had the selection show, I wasn't like, oh, I want to watch it. Oh, I'm ready for March Madness because I feel like to me. The the women's game mm -hmm. is slowly taking over and being more of an attraction to watch over yep. the men's game. So. I want to pose this question for those who are watching the show. Which NCAA tournament are you more invested in and why? Leave comments throughout the show right now. Which tournament are you more invested in, the women or the men? And uh, explain why. And we'll have the comments showing on the show throughout the rest of this interview. Uh, what yeah. are your thoughts, uh, Kenny, uh, Robert? I'm, I'm on both ends. I, I love the men's game, too. You know, I, I'm a I'm a mid major guy. I love mm. the upset. Don't get me wrong. It's cool for the North Carolinas and Dukes and all of them schools to win it. I'm sure they love it. They fans love it. But it's just something about a a Murray State, a, a, a Semo, or a right, George right. Mason. You know, a, a Kent State, a Wichita. Like, I'm talking about these schools that come in there and, and be able to knock a North Carolina, Michigan State, or Michigan, or, you know, just knock these teams out, man, by showing the world that you don't got to go get no top 100 kids to be on your roster to go out there and win a game. Just simple as that. You got to go get some hard-nosed kids, you know, some coachable kids, because some of these kids, divas, to be honest, they get to college and they just – they just they just act like divas. So they don't got no dog in them. They probably just was dominating in high school. So they get to college, man, and they don't know how to, you know, change a little bit, you know. So, but on the women's side, man, I, I love it, man. I, I love the battle that all of the top schools are ranking. You know, the Colorado, Nebraska, 
LSU, South Carolina, of course, Iowa, Ohio State. Uh, you got Kansas State. Man, I'm going down the board. Who else? Who else? Who's one of my favorite other players, uh, schools to watch? Uh, USC. From Tennessee, Juju, Arizona. You got Notre Dame. Shout out to Coach Ivy, man, one of St. Louis' homes. Uh, you just you just got a bump load of, of, of talent. And they're all at these prestigious top schools, but they're all showing that, like, we we got it too. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of spread out. So you just never know. You know, I'm on both sides. I like I like the women's side. I like the the challenge, the 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 competition, you know, and then on the men's side, man, I just love a good upset. You know, I love a good upset, man. So I'm an upset guy. So I like that. That's what's up. That's what's up. So yeah, Matt says the women, Caitlin Clark. Hey, I I agree. She's been She's been killing it, and uh, once again, the uh, both tournaments. Uh, I think the women is beginning this weekend, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely, definitely gonna be tuned in. And then, you know, you might see moments like this that might that may happen in a tournament. As yeah, very, un very unfortunate moment, man. I think uh, emotions run high. You know, the guy that jumped out the crowd, he definitely wrong. Right, because uh, you a grown man, you wanna you poking your chest out at women. These these young women at that, you know, one one right. discrediting, but they these are young ladies, man. Like these are still kids. These are right. forget that these are still teenagers. Like they're right. still in the teens. You know what I'm saying? So like that's just wrong. You know what I'm saying? But I think moments like this sometimes for the women's game, period. For the game, period. Man, you got to show some fire. And and you know we're not condoning. We want more fights, but it is yeah. something that that it, it brings attention to the game, in which is already on a nice peak. Even right. going to the WNBA, it, it's been so much more of a buzz. Yeah, with both co high school, college, and WNBA. So yeah. shout out to the ladies holding things down. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm not saying I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna watch the men play. I'm just saying that. I just haven't had that ooh in regards to the men's game. And I think one of the reasons why, uh, which I, this may hit home to you, especially with you uh, playing ball back then, but I think one of the reasons why the men's game may not be as interesting is because, like you said before, the player may be gone the next year. He may be on one team one year, but thanks to the transfer portal, mm -hmm. now they could be at three different schools and three different years, so it's kind of hard to, unless it's like your own, you know, alma mater or that one set team, but it's like, you don't know where this guy going to be at. How can you be behind one school every year? You don't know what to expect. When it, but with the women's game, more than likely, they're going to be there for all four years. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're, right. So they're, they're building up that program, and, and, and which I think is hurting the men's game, is that yeah. You know, you don't have those Draymond Greens no more, those Mateen Cleaves type guys, which stay all four years, and you built up not this, not just the program, but your own game. So when you go into the pros, you know what to expect. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, for but, sure. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I I, I like the, I mean, because I feel like the WNBA needs to do. Like I said, I, I I feel different about like certain things. So I feel like with the league, I like the four year thing. Don't get me wrong, I really do like it. I think it's it's great to show that you you stay because in order for you to get to the WNBA, one of their requirements is you have to have a college degree. Mm. That's where everybody don't know. You got to look at the rules and what they you got to have a college degree. Now, on the boy side. It's hard for them to do that because some of these some of them guys just really don't deserve to be there for four years and they do need to go ahead and go to the league. But I do feel like it needs to be some type of exception for some of these college girls that's coming in, you know, with with all of this flame and all of this fire that can go change a franchise, you know. But at the end of the day, it's dollars. Right. So they're making probably more money in college now than they will make going to be a rookie in the right. WNBA, you know, but that just goes to 
Uh, they need to expand it more. You know, I, I don't know why somebody ain't sitting around saying, hey, let's pick a market. Hey, these girls are about to graduate college. Let's go get all 10 of them. Tell them, come over here and play for play for this school, play for this team that's getting started up in this part of town. You know what I mean? It's almost like I would be going to try to go get the the next best 10 girls to come over here to come on and, and then give everybody get some investors in and give them all a million dollars. Like that's, I mean, why, why, why they just can't do that? You know? So it's just a lot of stuff that I feel like could, could change with the women's game, you know, but until they change some rules and, you know, allow maybe a two year or three year girl, go ahead and go to the league, you know, who knows, man, who knows how it goes, but you know, they real big on education. So I get it. I respect it for sure. That's what's up, man. So this photo I showed when Brittany Carter was on the show. And then I realized, I said, wait a minute. He was on, on this squad, too. So tell us about this squad here being part of the St. Louis Surge uh, program as well. Because oh. I see here you got Kalia Collier. She's doing amazing things now with the Mavericks. Yep. You got yeah. Brittany Carter uh, second to the right on the back row. Then you got mm -hmm. Michaela McGee right behind Kalia Collier. I mm -hmm. mean, this, this squad here is like doing it up. Yeah. Uh, so this is my second summer with the surge. So I did my first summer with the surge. I was under, uh, it was me, Tony and Gabrielle, Tony Condra and Gabrielle Green. So uh, my first summer with them was, was really good. This summer was with Coach Henderson. Uh, he's former coach at Washu. And uh, like I said, we had a good, we had a good little, we had a good little run. Uh, we needed a few more pieces to get it done, but we got to the, you know, we got to the playoffs. You know, we just didn't get to the chip. So uh, the the year before, we had lost by one or two in the championship game. So we was looking to kind of get back there again. Uh, like I said, good environment, man. All of these girls, man. Um, a few of them coaching college right now. Um, a few of them working. You know, still playing ball a little bit. Um. And I, all of them, man, pretty solid, man. I uh, I respect all of them and what they did for the game. Uh, allowed me to coach them, you know, and it was cool, man. I, I say my experience with the surge has been good. So uh, I, told, I told Kalia, man, I, I might want to make a comeback. So we're going to see. We can, we can pull it off. So even with her uh, doing her thing right now with the Mavericks, she still is doing stuff with the St. Louis surge. Is that correct? Yeah, she still is. She's still, you know, honing operations, uh, still the owner. You know, she just kind of got, hey, you still got a professional team to run. You know what I'm saying? So her doing that stuff with Dallas is very, very dope. Uh, you know, and I'm sure she's making connections and figuring out how to continue to put the surge on a big platform and, you know, do the right things for the surge and with the surge. And, and that's it, man. I think, uh, you know, just – you know, dig a little deeper into the talent wise and getting some talent, you know, that that can really take it to the next level, you know. And uh and I think uh they, they can still be a household name in the league. It's just right now they just on a it's on a roller coaster ride with them because they'll get to the they'll get there and play against certain teams that just can't get the job done. So, you know, you gotta try to go out there and, you know, and really develop a solid roster, uh, and go get girls that's that's ready to play and um and just kind of go from there so as we continue on with this once again incredible interview with robert kennedy uh nil gotta talk about it man it's taking over along with the transfer portal first yeah. off how how much do you feel you would have made if you played during the time of nil and then we'll get those um, on it overall right now and how it's affecting um the game Man, the way we were winning at Murray, man, I think uh, we all would have got a deal because we were all like mm -hmm. guys, uh, you know, uh, without saying too much, you know, we were all, you know, we were all taken care of at some point. Um, and it was cool, though. So I think uh, we would all got some type of money doing something, you know, but it was a, a car deal, like a commercial or a restaurant or something. You know, I think we all would have prevailed in some way. Um as far as the NIL deals, I don't really, really know the ins and outs because they say you can do it. Some schools can, some schools can't. 
Uh, I know Salou didn't do it for a while, and then they just popped up and did it. So I'm not sure what the rules are, you know, when it comes to getting an NIL deal. You know, I know a lot of schools are getting more on board now. They're trying to figure out how to keep their athletes, and I think getting NIL deals will probably help them keep some of those kids that they want to keep. But, I mean, nowadays kids' motivation sometimes is money. You know, some some of these kids come from from areas where, you know, we wouldn't think of that they come from. You know what I'm saying? On the outside, of course, they weren't good clothes and stuff like that, but they probably still, you know. I know for me, I probably would have been really trying to get to the money because we we lived in a project. So my goal would have been get my mom out the hood. You know what I'm saying? Get my mom at least to the crib, you know. So, like I said, it would be different strokes for different people. And uh, hopefully they're doing – was right by the money, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully right. they're saving it, hoping that they got some good financial literacy. I know probably in my time, we probably would have blew a couple thousand if we just knew we was just getting some money like that. Nowadays, they probably saving it a little bit. They probably stacking it. They probably, you know, learning how to invest in different stuff. So I think it's good. It's cool for the kids. You know, it some kids that might take the love away from it. Um, I like what Gilbert Arena said, uh, the other day because i watch a lot of his podcasts uh he said that uh he wouldn't dare let his son take an nil deal and they asked him why he said because he don't need them he don't need nothing so mm. a, lot of, a lot of these kids don't need the money so where's your motivation at are you still trying to get to the nba are you still trying to get overseas having this nil deal could block you from doing that it could have you doing stuff that you don't really have time for and it's taking away your time from being in the gym. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be mindful of what you're getting yourself into when you are getting the NIL deal. Is it going to take you away from your goal? What, what does that look like? You know, and he made some valid points about, you know, telling his son, like telling agents, don't ask him about nothing. Don't give him nothing. He don't want nothing. He don't need nothing. And I think parents nowadays, probably feel like the quicker they can get their kids out their pocket. Yeah, 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 go get a job or go take that money, go do this. That way I don't got to feed you no more. I don't got to feel, have a feeling, feel the need to take care of you. So, you know, we don't want to rush our kids into growing up so fast. You know what I'm saying? By having that responsibility of taking care of themselves at 18, 19, 20 years old, you know what I'm saying? They st you still should, your family should still, you know what I'm saying? Look out for you in a way especially if you got a dream to get somewhere. And that's just how I feel about it. But we can go on and on about that, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I know that's right. I know that's right. Uh, so as we uh, prepare to end this interview, we talked about Rob Kennedy, the the player, mm -hmm. uh, the coach and, and trainer and operations manager. The last thing I want to talk about, which I know means so much to you, is is family so talk about just yeah. you being you being a husband you being a father yeah while you're while you're still doing your thing as operations manager and being a coach as well man first off man shout out shout out none of this is possible man without my wife man uh my wife robin man she's uh the glue you know she's the one that uh you know kind of allowed me to get into these spaces to do what i can do you know what I'm saying? It, it can be stressful. It can be hard, you know, me not being here some nights or being gone, doing stuff just to kind of get myself out there, get the brand out there. You know, it's kind of, you know, it can kind of be stressful. But I think uh, her support, her love is is big, man. And I uh, can be more appreciative of a of a partner like her, you know, my wife, man, that that really just man, she just deserved she deserved everything. You know, what I'm saying I can't wait till this thing blow up. So I can, you know, give her more and more and more of the world, you know. And then as far as my daughter, man, I think it's probably the best thing that happened to me besides my wife. You know, uh, her allowing me to, uh, you know, just be a dad to her, man. I mean, she smiles when I come in at home. You know, some days can be hard, you know, and she's still like loving me you know what i'm saying so it's just it's real cool man to become a dad and um you know and just really just figuring it out and you know becoming that family man and you know just becoming the best husband i can be the best father i can be and uh and that's just and that's just where i'm at with it you know what i'm saying and that's just what i'm doing it for man i think uh 
they deserve a lot. And I'm going to work hard to to put myself in a position to, to get them that. And um, also just continue to love them. And they love me. And we just going to keep this keep this train rolling, man. I couldn't even be I – mean, like I said, I go on and on about them, man. But my wife is definitely a, a, a angel from up above, man. She does a lot. Like I said, she got her own business. She's a counselor at Kirkwood. She she do she love kids. Um, she's a great uh, mentor. Um, she does a lot of good stuff, man. Mental health is one of her expertise. So I can't even tell her nothing about mental health. She she will cut me off and be like, uh, no, no, you got the word wrong. You don't know how to do this. So I just kind of you know just kind of go from there, you know. That's what's up, man. I, I love to hear it. Shouts out to the wifey. Shouts out to the little one as well. Yeah, for and- sure. Uh, what would you, do you, I'm sorry, do you have any special uh, shout outs before we end this episode? Uh, Man, shout out, shout out to the Lou Runs. Of course, man, we, we still coming. Shout out to all my mentors, man. Like I said, I couldn't be more appreciative of all the coaches that's involved in this game coming up next week, especially Frazier and Tat, man. Those guys have shown me nothing but love from day one. You know what I'm saying? And I just, uh, can be more appreciative of those guys. Uh, just shout out to everybody that's, that's going to be involved in this event. Uh, just shout out to St. Louis, man. There's a lot of this stuff uh, wouldn't be possible without just the support from the city. They say you don't get support here, man, you know, and, and sometimes you don't, but for the most part you do. And when you do, man, it's, it's really good. And I think uh, if the city can continue to come together more and, uh, and do things and, for the for the kids and for you know what I'm saying just for the game I think it'd be dope. So me man, I'm a, shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying shout out to everybody that I've come across with in my path and um you know I couldn't be more uh thankful and um just uh you know just and just humble man and just trying to just grow man. That's it. So everybody else man just stay tapped in. Reach out to me if you got any questions about anything. Trying to get in the gym, whatever. You know let's work. Let's do it. There it is. And one more time, I want to let everybody know about next Thursday. Uh, next Thursday, man, we are at St. Mary's High School, man. It's called the Lou Next All American Game. Uh, Rising Star Game is at 6 p.m. Doors open at 5 15. Doors open at 5 15. Listen, when you watch this, this event may sell out. Now, that's just me because I feel like we're we, 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 we going to be that popping. But you will want to get there and get a seat. You know what I'm saying? You want to get there and get a seat. And then the main event is at 7.30. So uh, just come out, show some love. Show these kids some love. Of course, leave all the drama at home. This is a kid event. Just leave that where that need to be. And come out and show and have a good showing. Come out and show out for the city. There it is. Well, Rob Kennedy, man, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, getting your story you, told. You. Sure. Yes, sir. It definitely been a pleasure. Shouts out to Michelle Lay, who was holding things down, co-hosted with me early on. She had to go ahead and leave. Uh, Rob, if you don't mind, just stay on. We'll do a little quick uh, post-show uh, talk. Okay, cool. All right. So once again, this is your Wednesday Night Sports Delight, the platform sports talk show. We hope that uh, you all have enjoyed another edition. Once again, for those watching for the first time, we've been doing this for eight years next month it'll be officially eight years next month consistently holding things down every wednesday and it's not gonna stop anytime soon so definitely give us that like give us that follow on social media support the platform sports talk show we want to have continue should i say have more guests to be on this show if you are a current player former player coach media personality Whatever it is, we want to have your story told. So give us that follow on Facebook, the platform Sports Talk Show, on the X at 314 Sports Talk. Also, we on Instagram at platform Sports Talk. Once again, y'all know someone that will be an incredible guest. They can hold things down with a great story. Have them email us at platform Sports Talk Show at gmail.com. And go on YouTube, subscribe, click on that bell. So anytime we go live, you will be notified. 
Also, the show will be uploaded right away on Roku, along with the other social media outlets that we have. So just add the platform sports talk show as a channel on any Roku device, and you'll be seeing tons of great top, excuse me, content on there as well. We are also on Hot 365 Radio, where it is always hot. Crystal clear, high definition. Our voices just sound so sexy. So sexy. I just got to say that. Go on Hot365Radio.com or on your phone, iOS or Android. I'm almost said Apple. Android. Just put in Hot365Radio. You'll see the logo. And go ahead and give them a follow on the app and listen to us when you can't see us. Every first Wednesday of the month, we have the all ladies panel, ladies night. And when I say these ladies know their stuff, they know their stuff. And then next week and every last Wednesday of the month, you have the man cave, the all male panel. So every week we are doing something very special on the platform sports talk show i am your boy smooth i see we have a comment and oh your mom said the reese anderson said robert kennedy you're doing a great job thank you for having my son on the show you are so welcome miss anderson it's been a pleasure and that's what this what this show is all about you know we just want to reach out to those who have a great show to tell and we have the platform to make that happen but for everyone else have a great rest of your week. Hope y'all enjoyed 314 Day last week and uh, allow the platform sports talk show to be your home team. Get it? Peace out, y'all. The platform sports talk show. We out.